Letitia Stauk is a stepmother who is currently on trial, facing charges of doing away with her stepson, Gannon Stauk, an 11-year-old beautiful little boy. Letitia is exhausting. We're going to listen to this first phone call. It's about two hours long. Before they play the phone call, this was played on Tuesday, April 4th. Letitia's estranged husband, Al Stauk, he gets on the stand and he tries to clean up the timeline a little bit. He gets confused and I don't blame him one bit for getting confused. He is a better person than me for having to deal with this woman. Oh my goodness. In the end, she's going to try and beg her husband to come home. Yada, 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 whatever, whatever. She says that quite a bit. In this first phone call, she's going to talk about fire alarms, bath bombs. You know, you'll see a few photos I've put atop of the kind of boring courtroom footage because she's so far away, we can hardly tell what she's doing. But again, thank God we can see inside this courtroom, unlike, unlike other trials. She's going to talk about being attacked, about Gannon allegedly stepping on a board in the garage. All fanciful lies that try and gaslight her ex-husband, just like he will say in upcoming calls she used to do to him, it's the same thing she was doing to Gannon. In that video that Letitia filmed that night, the fateful night before Gannon died, when there was some kind of a candle spill. But Albert Stout took the stand again Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. Judge Greg Warner talks about how hot it was in the courtroom. So this phone call took place about three weeks after 11-year-old Gannon Stauk was reported missing. The day he was reported missing was January 27, 2020. His dad, his bio dad, who is Albert Stauk, military man, out of town, and Gannon was with his stepmom, Letitia, who had her bio daughter, Harley Hunt, who was a teenager, so she was, you know, driving around on her own, and little Lena, who is Gannon's little sister. Boy, some of this is so annoying and frustrating to hear. Some people are hard on Al. I don't know what Al has been through. Again, I say he's a better person than me to put up with this. In the forthcoming calls, like calls two, three, four, five, how many other others are there that they play today i'm going to put those in a separate video or else these videos would be way too long he's a better person than i am i don't want to pile on he's been through so much pain some people come down hard on al because i believe he met leticia like he said during a softball game he admitted that he wasn't yet divorced from his first wife of 10 years unbeknownst to him leticia may have had the beauty and the long dark hair and the body and all that but Al likely didn't know he was bringing a demon into his home that would end up doing away with his own son, his own flesh and blood. Eventually, the courtroom video will pop on. You won't just see the judge like in the beginning. You'll also see the lawyers, the people, and Letitia hiding off in the corner. It's like she's covering her ears or stuffing her ears with something during much of the evidence being played, hiding behind her hair. T Letitia, or T, or Tisha, as they call her, she seems to have a good rapport with her own lawyer. It reminded me of a Jose Baez and Casey Anthony vibe, but let's hope Letitia doesn't get off like Casey Anthony did. This recorded phone call number one features Al. At this point, he knew from the beginning Letitia was lying with him, so he started working with investigators to catch her. So that's why the phone call was recorded. You can hear other people whispering, telling Al maybe what to say. He, Letitia, kind of gets hip to it, especially in future phone calls. This one is kind of like the calmest of the five or six phone calls I think they played today. They finished them. It took so long. They, they played some on Tuesday, April 4th. They played the rest of the phone calls on Wednesday, April 5th. So Letitia sounds drunk or something under the influence of something. They keep getting disconnected. Maybe it's her fault. She's complaining about being hungry. But before the call is even played, Al does say from the stand, he realized pretty early on that the home they were renting at 6627 Mandan Drive in Colorado Springs, the one that Letitia found, she moved into first with the kids and Al came later. Albert realized pretty soon after Gannon was reported missing as a runaway by his stepmom, 
that it was probably a crime scene. He didn't know what happened, but he we, said, we better all get out of here. So long, nearly two hours, the, the judge even calls for a stand up and stretch break. So I know at the end, you know, some people just want summaries. At the end of this case, when Letitia's found guilty from my mouth to God's ear in Jesus name, I'm praying, I hope I can do like a quick summary for those of you who prefer just 20 minute videos. I know a lot of people like to see coverage from gavel to gavel. So that's why I'm presenting all of this for you to see lies on full display, but not her insanity. The phone call is so long because you'll hear Letitia laying a line of BS the whole time. You know, when a person tells you a long drawn out story with like details that don't matter. Every time Letitia is asked a pointed question by Al, like, you know, what about this? You said this and you can barely hear her. It's almost like she's like holding the phone away and pretending and it gets worse on the forthcoming calls. You know, she'll say, oh, I'm getting to that. Or I told you that. Or I didn't say that. Or remember I told you that. Ugh. She's very self-focused. She's talking about her own hunger. She's talking about not having any of her credit cards and stuff because cops took all the stuff. She knew she was lying. So I'm going to close it here with the first phone call. We'll follow up with the additional phone calls coming up. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15. For the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for their sake. Stay tuned. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you, you may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, when we took our break, we were uh, getting ready to start listening to uh, some audio uh, recordings of uh, telephone calls. That's where we will resume. Mr. Allen? And, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, Judge. Uh, <clears throat> what I would like to do before we actually jump into the those phone calls is clean up some of the timeline. Any okay. confusion, Judge? And uh, what I want to start with first is showing the defense or uh, Mr. Stauk, People's Exhibit Number Thirty Two. May I approach? The witness. Thirty Two. That was not one that was. So that's new. That's new. Okay. All right. Yep. Go ahead. It's text And uh, take a moment to familiar, familiarize yourself with People's Exhibit Number 32. Flip through it, and then let me know when you're familiar with it. Had a chance to look that through? Yeah, I've looked it through. Kind of uh, thumbed through it. Okay. What is People's Exhibit 32, just generally speaking? Generally speaking, it's uh, multiple text message threads between myself and the defendant. On the outside cover of that binder, does it have sort of a key on it that tells us what we're looking at inside the binder? Yes, sir, it does. Does it have a blue box with your phone number above it? It does. And again, just to remind the jury, what is your phone number? 843-478-6714. Uh, and then the other side of that um, cover sheet, does it have a green box that would signify defendant's text messages? It does. And does it have her phone number also listed there? Yes, sir. What is that phone number? 843-655-7460. And the date range, so you'd have to go to the very first text message in that binder and then look at the very last text message in that binder. The first one, is that on January 26, 2020? Yes, sir. What time? Should have the time on it. I have a timestamp of 12.59.05. And then the very last text message? Uh, January 29th uh, at 8.16.48.
Say that time again, I'm sorry. Uh, it says 8.16.48. So 48 seconds. 48 seconds, yes. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Are those uh, fair and accurate, uh, basically, depictions of your text messages between the defendant and yourself for that timeline, January 26, 2020, through January 29th, 2020? Yes, what, I, what I've seen so far, yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd move for admission of People's 32. Defense? I don't mind if they use this exhibit to refresh his recollection as the time and dates and so forth. I don't think the proper foundation has been laid as far as the admission of the exhibit, as far as where these text messages came from, how they came into being, and so forth. I think they'll probably be laid for a different witness later on. I, d I don't have exhibit 32, so all I know is that they are generally described as text messages. Um, let me see them. Okay. And that's accurate. I don't have 32, right? No. Okay. What you have is photographs. That's, oh, that's what I thought. Okay. Mr. Allen. So, Mr. Stout, how do you know what those are? Um, just to some of the ones I've looked at so far come back to my mind um, of text messages and conversations we, myself and the defendant, had uh, in, in this general time frame. Did you receive those on your personal cell phone that is signified by the phone number on the front cover of that sheet? Yes, sir. To the best of my recollection, yes, sir. And the number that they are attributed to as to coming from, uh, is that from essentially what you understand as the defendant's phone? Yes, sir. The objections overruled. Exhibit 32 is admitted. If you, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to have all of these displayed on the screen, Mr. Stout, because it would be uh, obviously a lot of text messages there. But can you flip to January 27th at 2.48 a.m.? Is it a page number? No, you'll have to look at the time okay. and date stamp. So it'll be closer to the front. 20, January 27th at what time? 2.48 a.m. 2.48 a.m. Yes. Do you see a text message from the defendant's phone at 2.48 a.m. on January 27th? Yes, sir. Uh, what does that text message say that was sent to you? It says, he is in the bathroom again and blood coming out butthole and he is crying about going to school tomorrow like this. And he is still upset about the candle accident. I told him it's fine and that as long as he was okay not to worry about something minor we can fix and let's worry about his stomach hurting. So when the text message uh, in your mind says he is, who is the he is in that text message? Gannon. How do you know that? Because I, I don't know if it's in these text messages thread, but we had discussed his, uh, uh, that specific um, stomach incident previously already in, in, in this general time frame. Okay. So based on context, you were able to determine that the, at least from the defendant's phone, uh, is a text saying that Gannon is bleeding out of his yes. butt. Yes. Had that ever occurred before? If there was any, I mean, so he, I, I, and I mentioned this previously, he did have a stomach issue where he gets severely constipated and would have, that'd be too graphic, but have, you know, some large um, pieces of, of stool that was hard to pass. And, and he may have a little bit of 
blood in the stool or, 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 you know, but he would never bleed like a gush or drip or anything like that. It would just be a drop or something associated with that. So nothing serious um, uh, like this. Okay. Can you find a text um, at 8, 10 a.m. that has a reference to lighting a candle, Gannon lighting a candle? What date, Mr. Allen? Same day. Same day. I'll, if I change the day, I'll tell you about okay. 8, 10 a.m. Thank you. Uh, 8, 10 a.m. since don't see 8 10 a.m about the candle well do you generally remember getting a text from the defendant's phone uh referencing that gannon lit a candle because he um because of the smell from poop uh yes i remember that did was that odd to you that um purportedly gannon would light a candle yeah i, I don't remember him ever playing or lighting candles on his own accord Okay. Uh, if he was directed to, maybe, but never, you know, going in and doing mm -hmm. that on his own. Next thing I want to um, ask you about is, were you aware uh, from the defendant um, about the defendant taking Gannon and Lena hiking at Garden of the Gods on the 26th. Sir. What did the defendant tell you about that hiking trip? Uh, I believe there was some talk about him pooping in his pants or having an accident uh, during that hiking, somewhere in that afternoon that they went hiking. <clears throat> did the defendant express any frustration with that incident? I don't remember, I don't know if frustration is right, or I don't remember what the, the feeling was that she displayed, but there was a conversation about it. Well, how would you characterize the way that she was expressing that story to you? I, I mean, I, I can speak more generally. I just know that it, it was it was always a frustrating or, or she didn't like to have to clean it up and, and or, or deal with that part of Gannon. Having so, to clean up after Yeah, he when he had an accident. Okay. And, And then we already had previously talked about, you got a text message on the 28th in the morning, two text messages actually with those pictures of Gannon in bed. From the bedroom, yes, sir. Do you remember that? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> when you got back to Colorado from Oklahoma, did you meet with detectives at a Starbucks? Yes, the Starbucks in Fountain, yes, sir. Was that on January 28th, 2020? So the so so, Tuesday, yes, sir. It was Tuesday the 28th, yes, sir. Okay. Who was with you when you went to that Starbucks? Uh, myself and the defendant. I mean, and then whatever detectives were there. I don't remember specifically. I think there was two or three, but okay. uh, as far as our side goes, it was my, myself and the defendant. The phone that we admitted earlier, Gannon's phone, is that when you gave that phone to the detectives so that they could use it for investigative purposes? I believe so, but I don't remember specifically when I turned it over to them. Okay. What was, um, what did you tell the detectives at that time? Um, and I'm asking in a general sense, obviously you probably don't remember word for word. Yeah, I know we're working through he's missing and what we had done so far, I think, and, and what I knew about what I had done as far as like calling his friend's parents and, you know, calling his mom and stuff like that. I remember that being a part of it, I think. Um, also we had his Nintendo switch box because he was, it, so let me let me stop you there and okay. we'll, we'll get to some of that. Okay. Um, when you said what you had done as a result of, of he being missing, you're talking about Gannon. Yes, sir. Just for the record again. Um, were you sitting at the same table as the defendant during that time? We were. We were sitting side by side. Yes, sir. Were you able to hear what she was telling to the detectives? Yes, sir. What did she tell the detectives about Gannon's disappearance? I don't remember specifically, but it was all centered around him being missing or running away, not coming home, That the storyline up to that point. Well, okay, so what we had talked about earlier was um, that he had gone to a friend's house and had not come home? Right, yes, sir. Same thing? Yes, sir. She was telling the same story at that time? Yes, sir. And then we talked earlier about you going to the sheriff's office to give an interview. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And then you had a follow-up interview at the sheriff's office as well. Yes, sir. 
Did those both occur on January 28th? Uh, yes, sir. When you went um, the first time, where was the defendant at that time? I, I do not know. Uh, I, I went because... Um, so... Okay. Yep. Do you, so you don't know where the defendant was? I do not. She Did she go with you to the sheriff's office? No, sir. Okay. What did you tell the sheriff's office detectives during that interview? I don't remember all the specifics. I've, I've, I have heard the interview, but I don't remember all the specifics. Um, I, was, I know I was more vague with what I was telling them about mine and the defendant's relationship because uh, I didn't... Um, this was before I went to search for the black car or before I went to search for the defendant's car. So I didn't really suspect anything for you. Like I mentioned previously, that black car was really, or the looking, the search for that black car was really what changed my mind about what was going on. Um, so I, I was just trying to find my son at that point. I didn't think anything else really was going on. I thought he was just missing. So once again, I don't remember all the specifics. I just remember I was more vague about whatever was going on. Um, in my in my life, so so um, again, just to making make sure that we're all clear, mm -hmm. the defendant didn't go with you to the sheriff's office. No, sir. Did you reiterate basically the same story that um, Gannon was missing and hadn't come home? I believe I did. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and it sounds like what you're describing is that you were telling this in a more general sense because of all of the things that you were talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. And then. It was after that, based on the way you just said that, that you went to look for the defendant's car at French Elementary School? Yeah, I, like I said this morning, I, I left that first interview, went home, checked on the girls, and then went out to search again uh, to Walmart, looking, planning on going to the game section or whatever. And then it hit me to go look for the car at French Elementary School. Wasn't there, and I didn't get too far out of the parking lot of French before I called. I think I got a hold of Bethel was who it was and said, Hey, something's wrong. And I started, I was actually freaking out pretty hard and they're like, calm down, just come on, just come back downtown. And that's when I did the second interview. So <clears throat> what was it about you not finding the car at French elementary school that caused you to, as you just now described it to freak out? Uh, well, two things. It was a flat out lie in my estimation. Um, that's my perspective. Um, Cause she told me the car was there and never told me she had moved the car. Um, and a few other things. And once again, I don't want to get into the hearsay, but things I didn't see that people had told me, I put, I was putting all these pieces together. And then that was the first lie I, I in my mind, I had confirmed. Oh, so yeah. Oh, come on. She's there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying. So um, <laughs> there's a lot here. Yeah. And um, obviously we're talking about your son and yes. understand that this is a stressful moment for you, uh, having to recollect this from three years ago. Um, really listen to what the question is and just answer that question, okay? Um, when you went to look for the defendant's car at French Elementary School, did you find it? No. Did that um, cause you to change your opinion as to, along with other things like you said this morning, as to the nature of Gannon's disappearance. Absolutely, yes, sir. When you went to the sheriff's office that second time, so later in the evening on January 28th, um, did you specifically tell the detectives what you thought uh, was in the defendant's car based on the information you had? Yeah, I made a statement to them about, uh, they asked me that question and I just replied with what I thought I was gonna find in the car. What did you think you were gonna find if you found the car? I think my hope was to find Gannon. Um, you know, that was the whole point of searching was to find Gannon. So you thought Gannon might be in that car? I had no clue, but that's what I that's what I said to them. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. And then if you can flip in those text messages to January 29th at 7.19 a.m. <laughs> Sir, I believe I'm here. Do you see text messages on, on that time frame um, from the defendant? Yes, sir. 
Do you see any text messages uh, wherein you're getting text messages about a rape? About what? Rape. You said January 29th, 7.20 a.m. or 7.19 a.m. We're, we're not publishing. Oh, you did. Oh, sorry. Has been admitted, so I thought that's what you wanted. I thought we did it, Judge. <laughs> no, it was me. I don't. And is always the case with technology. Now the screen is black on this computer. <laughs> So while I'm trying to get this computer up, Mr. Stout, do you remember when it was that you were notified from the defendant about a rape story? I'm not asking you to look at the text messages. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's in relation to these texts. She was asking me to come talk to her in the bedroom through the text message. Uh, as I stated this morning, I was sleeping on the couch. She was in the bedroom. And then I finally gave in and went in and uh, uh, accepted her request to talk. And that's when she uh, started telling the first rape story. What did she tell you about a rape story? Uh, the first story was uh, that, like I said, she had got raped. Uh, the person, uh, you know, there was, you know, not just the sexual part, but she had been beat up or whatever. Uh, and then Gannon also had been uh, beat up and, uh, you know, he talked about his burns and all that stuff as well. And then Gannon was taken by this person um, that it happened in Gannon's bedroom and that she cleaned up the mess. And uh, I think that was the brunt of the first version of the story. <laughs> Did she tell you where that rape had occurred? Yes, sir. I, I think you were messing with computers, but uh, yeah. is she, it happened in. I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she said it specifically happened in Gannon's bedroom. Did you go into the bedroom and talk to her? Yeah, but prior to this first rape story, I, no, no. I did, yes. What I'm saying is um, you, you were describing that you were in the living room sleeping on the couch. Uh, I think you said that she was inside the bedroom texting yes, you. Yes. Did you go into the bedroom and talk to her? Yes, sir. Prior to the, her starting the rape story. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got, I got enough computers here. <laughs> um, what was her demeanor like when you went into the bedroom? Uh, she seemed a little frantic, a little, I, I mean, that's the best way to put it. Just frantic and, you know, but, I don't know you whether to describe it. It was just kind of all over the place. Well, let me Freaking ask you out, this. But... Let me ask you this specifically. Uh, did she appear to be crying? No, sir. What about her voice inflections? What was her voice doing? Uh, I mean, it seemed normal, uh, not normal, but it seemed, I mean, she was frantic, like I said, of freaking out. So it was, it was kind of rushed and, you know, she was t telling me about how she got raped, allegedly, so. <clears throat> What did you do with that information uh, now that you're hearing this for the first time that there's potentially a rape that has occurred in Gannon's bedroom? Uh, so three specific things. Well, before those, first I asked her to stay in the room that I'd be right back. Uh, my mom and my sister had slept the night before in Gannon's room. So I immediately went and told them they need to get all their stuff and get out. Um, and I, I, I told him very limited. I don't know what all I specifically told him. I just said, it's maybe a crime scene now. I, I think I notified the authorities to some degree. And then I went and got all of the weapons in my house and basically confiscated them and put them in my truck and locked them, made sure I had the key. I think, uh, well, not, I think uh, my one uh, Smith & Wesson um, nine millimeter compact, I handed to Landon's brother. Um, 
just for just for safety and uh, keep it on his side. Um, he, I, I trusted him. He's like a jailer or a police officer or something. So, All right. Um, so let me let me break in there for yeah. just a moment. Um, when you say you went to gather all the weapons, are you talking about those firearms that you described earlier? Yeah, every single one of them. And I did it in a specific order. I got all the ones that were mine registered to me. And then I went back and asked her, said, I, I need you to help. Who is her? Oh, excuse me, the defendant. Okay. I went back directly to the defendant, said, I need the ones that are in her name, which the shot, the 12 gauge shotgun and one of the pistols possibly. And I said, you don't have to, cause they're yours, but I need these and I'm gonna put them away for safekeepings right now. And, and she did, she complied and she, and I went and put those in the truck as well. So what was in your mind? Why, why did you think you needed to lock up the firearms in a vehicle? Because my first impression was, was a bullshit story and that something else was going on and then something happened in the bedroom that I, I just wasn't sure. And I guess it's my military training. I don't know, but safety was the first priority for everybody. So get all the weapons out of the house, put them somewhere safe. And then, then I went back and talked to her again. What did you do after you um, put the guns in the vehicle? I went back and, and directly went uh, straight to her and asked her to retell me the story. Who else was in the bedroom at that time? Uh, Landon was also in there. Did the defendant at that time um, give you any impression that Gannon was injured as a result of something happening in the bedroom along with this rape? Yes. Uh, anything about blood? Yes. What did she say about blood on Gannon? Well, it was involved in the rape and the, the beatings that they both supposedly took, um, that there was bl just blood everywhere, her blood and his blood. Did she say what she had done in regard to that blood? Uh, yes, she said she had cleaned it up. Did she describe any blood on bed sheets? I believe so. I, I don't want to uh, say specifically yes, but I believe she did. Okay. I want to jump ahead to January 31st. <clears throat> Do you remember sharing some text messages with the defendant about her coming back to the house? So this would be after she'd moved out um, to collect things from the house or, or phone con calls. So let me clarify this. You said after she had like physically moved out or came and got her stuff and where, moved out. Where she had physically removed herself from okay. the house but wanted to come back and get her belongings. I just want to clarify. Yes, yeah, absolutely. There was multiple phone calls and text messages throughout those few days. And I I remember specifically, we scheduled a time for her to come and I uh, ensured, I, I scheduled a time that way I could ensure a deputy would be there to kind of monitor the situation uh, because it it it'd become very volatile by that point. So um, did the defendant in fact come to the house? Not on that first time. I think it was the second scheduled time, but she did. Who did she come with? Uh, the defendant came with, uh, well, herself, uh, Harley came, her mother, um, and her brother, Dakota Lowry. What is her mother's name? Uh, Deborah. I don't remember. I don't know exactly okay. what her last name is. And I'm not asking you to tell us anything that Harley said, but how was Harley acting during this time? Very reserved, I think is the best way to put it. As far as people that were already in the house at that time, not talking about who came with the defendant, but who was at the house separate from that group, who was at the house? Uh, my brother, Les um, Stauk. Um, I think Landon would have been there in Veronica, uh, the deputy. Um, Veronica being Landon's aunt, to clarify, um, the de whichever deputy, I think it was Berklich, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I was there, of course. Uh, I think my sister Becky would have been there as well. Um, Becky, um, uh, Beck Rebecca Lynn. Uh, I think that's it. Where was Lena? Uh, Lena as well. Yeah, Lena was there. Thank you. <clears throat> Were you watching what stuff was being carried in and out of the house? I stayed in two main areas and I stayed in the kitchen for a while. So I did see, um, when I say traffic coming up and down the stairs from Harley's room, bringing stuff. And then I went into the bedroom at one point while Tisha was gathering some of her belongings. Um, and I do remember the deputy followed me in there. He was in there as well. The whole time I was in there with Tisha. So, okay. uh, the defendant, excuse me. 
So that suitcase that we talked about earlier, <clears throat> that um, that green suitcase, uh, did you ever see that come out of the house on that day? No, sir. Did you ever see it come out of the house in relation to this investigation? No, sir. Once she moved her belongings out of the house on January 31st, how would you communicate with the defendant after that? Through text message, there may have been, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in between the period before I started the pretext phone calls. There was text messages and I believe some emails and possibly some phone calls as well. I, I don't remember specifically, but any version of those three, I think were in play. What about in-person conversations? I don't, I don't believe I ever saw her again um, after she left until I saw her in the courtroom. Okay. <clears throat> Did, during that particular time frame, so from January 31st uh, until we start into these pretext phone calls, uh, did the statements that the defendant was telling you about what happened again and ever change? Yes, they, I mean, they changed in, uh, yes. In what ways did they change? Um, different people were accused, different, the, something happened again and at different places, whether, well, I, I, I think I'm mixing up some of the pretext stuff too. So I'm, I'm trying, I don't know, but yeah, there was different stories told. Okay. So, and and so we're gonna get into the pretext phone calls yeah. obviously, and that will, we'll actually be able to hear those things. What I'm trying to do is um, just get in, into what you're thinking happened based on what you're hearing from the defendant. And so um, you said that there was different names being mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's a yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you remember any of those names now? Yeah, there, I think one of the first ones was Eduardo. Um, or yeah, some version of that. There was another name. I don't think it came into play until the pretext, um, the Quincy Brown. I, okay. I think that's when that came into play. Um, so let, let me back up and stop yeah. you there. Um, in relation to the name that you just said, Eduardo, mm -hmm. let's say yes or no. Yes. yes. Uh, what did she tell you about Eduardo? So I, I'll be honest, I'm having trouble. I think all, all the all the different versions are mixing together when they happen. So I, I don't know. I, I know there was a story that sh the defendant told me about. Um, there was a man in the neighborhood, a carpet guy. Or so let, let me ask you specifically about that. Please. Did she give you a um, statement about al her allowing a man from the neighborhood that was a construction worker into the house to fix the carpet? I think the story was she gave him the code. I, I, but yeah, some, somehow he got in the house. The question is, did she tell you a story with those sort of details in it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What was the story that she told you in relation to that? Like I just said, I think it, I, I think it involved in that specific one that she gave him the code of the garage and he came in. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss on that, Mike. Or Mr. Allen, I'm sorry. You're fine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you know anybody by that name? Absolutely not. I don't. I don't believe. Um, did she allege that that's the person that raped her in the first time that she tells the story? Yes. Okay. Now I want to jump into these phone calls and we're going to have to reconnect our computer. So just a moment. That first pretext phone call. Which is people's exhibit number 35 previously admitted. Who was on that particular phone call? 
It would have been my. No, it's, yeah, it's it's not tricky. Yeah, oh, it's my you on the defendant. Yeah. Okay. And then there's other people that are feeding you information to ask them. Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this point, I would ask you uh, permission to publish People's Exhibit 35, which is this is that longer phone call, an hour and 57 minutes. Okay. Um, because there's so many, what you'll need to do is when we stop one and begin the other, you'll just have to tell for purposes of the record what it is that you're doing. Yeah. And what I, what I intend to do, Judge, is uh, play it for just a second so we can hear voices, have Mr. Stauk identify who those voices are, and then just let it play from that point. All right. That's fine. Judge, you would think after COVID, we'd be more adept at our computer skills. It's my fault. All right. I'll have our technological issues, but it's not mine. <laughs> All you should have to do is uh, plug it in the same way that you had it before. Yeah, we just didn't. Hello. Whose voice was that? That was my voice. Okay, go ahead. Keisha? Hello. Hey. Whose voice is that? It was the defendant's voice. Okay. So, Judge, at this point, we'll just let it play. All right, Mr. Stock, you can go ahead and step down. Thank you. Why didn't you say anything? Yeah, I said hello. It's just hard because I have to get service off Wi Fi. Yeah. So, uh, so what's up? Oh, I'm hungry. You still haven't eaten anything? No. Huh? No. Why not? I don't have any money or cards. I have all that. I have all my debit cards, credit cards. Who has all that? They have it from my car. I don't have anything from my car. Oh, you didn't have it with you? I did. I had my purse with me, but they took my purse and they took my Apple Watch and all that. It took everything I had possession on. Why did they do that? I don't know. I guess the same reason they took everything that was in that book bag and all they car. I mean, they even took the dog paper and the security card and my birth certificate. My passport, which is why I can't be at the airline because I have to have a passport. You're not working at the school anymore? I thought you was had the early college thing going on. Right. They took my laptop. Then they took my car. So I called them and said, hey, I don't have a way to get to work right now. I'm going to work on this. You got my car back in a day or two. 
So you still, still need the help in getting me up there. Who's no one, like the police or whatever? Like I've called the evidence department several times and just been like, can I at least get my back? Can I at least get anything that deals with my everyday life of operating? Like my cards, my passport. And then the guy was like, well, why do you need your passport? I said, no. It's required by FAA to have it with you at all times, or you cannot even get to the airport, can't do anything. Yeah, you told me that. I forgot. I'm sorry. So I just want to get my content like that, because how am I supposed to work if I don't have any of it? Yeah, I know. I, I... Placed on hold. Please wait for your contact to return. Hello? Oh, where? Hello. Hey. What happened? The Wi-Fi, I don't have a number, so the Wi-Fi just dies, so I had to use this Indian dude's number here, phone number here to call you back on because I don't only have Wi-Fi. Okay. But anyway, so like having to that stuff. So I'm not trying to purposely not go to work, not do anything. I just need help obtaining any of it to even do anything well i'm having trouble too because they still freaking got my truck and my you know how i have those badges i gotta get in yeah i can't freaking get into my secure part of my job so i can't i can't even do what i'm supposed to be doing either so it's freaking driving me nuts so like the people are fussing at harley because she needs her high school diploma and she needs a report with her um, ID, social, and high school diploma, and I'm trying to explain to them what's going on. Yeah. And, like, I just can't get any help because she's supposed to be there every week on base doing stuff. Um, she leaves in 28 days. For basic. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did anything ever happen with that job, that new MOS? Yeah, the guy wants to talk to her about it. That's why he told her, he said, to come in, but we didn't have a way, so we explained that to him. So we didn't have a way. We, I don't, we don't have a way to get on base because they have IDs. They have everything. It's in the book bags, everything. Okay. What, what, were you talking, what, is C, what was that thing you said you called? I just popped in my head. C, was CIB or something? Yeah, I... You guys, I'm trying to talk to you about, like, help, and they're not, I'm not downing or talking about anyone, but they don't need to be the lead agency if they're not going to lead. So the Colorado Bureau of Investigations can even look at it from a different approach. So I called the Colorado Bureau of Investigations, and I talked to someone, and they're going to call me back. What did you tell them? I didn't say anything bad about anyone. I just said there's a lot of key things that they're choosing to leave out. And I says it's becoming a witch hunt after one person. I said when they're barking up the wrong tree and they're not even following what credible things that I've told them. What, like they what? want tips from the public, but the public was not there. Well, what credible things have you told? That's what I, in our emails I'm trying to, and I know you said you were waiting to talk to me and everything, but what what is the what is it that you've told them? Because I know we had some 
you know, uncertainty about some of the things initially, and that's fine. But like, what what is it that you told them that they're not looking at? What I mean, what is the? Can you walk me through it? I know I asked you for the timeline. Sick. I can't breathe. Give me one second. Take your time. Just, just try to get some deep breaths. I'm just trying to put the window down. Just stupid thing because. Oh, it's hot. And like I'm having to like run into people I don't even freaking know. They could be mad killers and shit to be like, hey, can I use your phone? Hey, can I sit in your car for a minute? Hey, do you think I can drive your car to your store? I know I'm I'm starting to get feel some heat too. i like I told you when I went to the Bass Pro Shop last night. You know I wanted to get some clothes, but I was trying to hope to run in you on the north end, like you said you were out there, but you know. Yeah. Well, I just, I, like I said, I was just trying to hope to bump into you or something, but I feel like I'm having to hide now. That's why I went and got some, like, you know, redneck clothes, like you, the clothes that you don't like, because all those nice clothes I have at the house that you got me, you know, I would just stick out like a sore thumb, and I'm just trying to hide, too. I don't know how long you got, but I just wanted to start with you for Saturday, what I have. Okay. I listen. I, I I scooted away for lunch, so I, you know, probably hour, hour and a half, so we got plenty of time. All right. What do you mean, scooter away from lunch? Like, Are you, like not, you don't have a car? Yeah, I got a rental car. Uncle Jeff like helped me out with a rental car, but like, I just had to get away from all them people. Like I've been telling you, it's just crazy. So. You stand by yourself. I'm me and Uncle Jeff. Okay, so your Uncle Jeff is there with me. Yeah, okay. it's I've always it's been like me with my family members the whole time. So. So how long can your Uncle Jeff stay? I, I have no clue. It's people have been kind of jumping in and out, but I just didn't want you to be by yourself because I've been trying to be with you because I don't think that you should be by yourself with them because it's a bunch of vultures. That's all. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm starting to slowly see that. So, but yeah, let's just so, this timeline because okay. I want to hear. So, I want to hear your timeline so I can try to make sense of it. Saturday. Okay, you said you wouldn't question. You would just listen. Saturday. Hold on, Tisha. Tisha. Saturday. Like, what do you mean Saturday? Like, right before I like me and me and Mama left Saturday. After you left. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So this is the paper I have. I had to get it notarized because. What that guy said to do right after y'all, whoever found us and took Holly's car, that's where we had left from was the attorney. But anyway, all right. Um, so I'm gonna just go through certain things. I'm not gonna read it verbatim how he did it because it would be more of like in ball terms. But right, you know, key one, Albert and his mom left for Denver. We put D in in there. Um, around the house, cleaned up, G helped with stuff, um, helped me get stuff out of his car. He, Gan's always barefooted because that was something that he asked me. Even taking the trash out, things like that. He took the trash out. Um, he stepped on something in the garage. So my car parked. You had those boards that were underneath my car, right? Yeah. You know, was going to go help because he was saying that there was some kind of piece out there that was going to help me. You know the little zip ties that you have on things and it's hard to get off? Yeah. Like the so he was he knew or something for that and go pop this off. So he was going to go get it because I had bought them some things from the clearance store. All right, so he and I cut his foot on those boards. We flipped the boards over because we were freaking out because I was like, oh, my God, your daddy said don't get oil or anything from your car and leak on those boards. Do you know what boards I'm talking about? The one, the, like the two by fours that I have, like that you drive over to park in the garage right. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, I let Gannon sit down in the back of the car. You know how funny I am about my car. But also, we just bandaged it up, whatever. All we did was stick a bandage on it, whatever, whatever. And I said something to him about, again, you got to quit coming out here barefooted, which I do the same thing. I take dogs out barefooted anyway. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you, let me, hold on, wait a second. I'm just thinking here, and I'm, I, I, and I'm going to listen to everything. Just something that popped in my head. He always goes out the front door to do the trash. That's so weird. But he was helping me unload. Like, I have bought them a bunch of stuff in the clearance store. If you look in the garage. I got you. Okay, I thought you said take out the trash. I'm sorry. Let, let, let me explain this to you. There's two bags that was put in the garage because I have put a bunch of stuff in there. I went and bought them a bunch of crap that went on sale from the clearance store because they were changing over to, like, 
warm weather stuff, but obviously in Colorado, you can still wear the cold weather stuff. I saw Lena online wearing, so therefore I knew it was in the house. But anyway, so my point was, um, he was really, you know, helping me out, whatever, you know, just talking to me about something. Who knows what he was talking about. He tells me about video games. I listen, but I don't understand them. Anyway, so, so he was bleeding on his foot. And we turned the boards over because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to freak out, you know, because these are the boards. He says, don't you get oil on my car. Don't drip on my car or whatever. All right. So um, during this time frame, he was supposed to be taking the trash out. I said, you might as well take out recycle, whatever, whatever. But Danny kept going to the gate with nothing. And I kept saying, why are you going to the gate? He was like, I'm going to make sure the gate is locked. Well, okay, this is the first I'd known. I knew we were talking about walking the gate, but I didn't know Gannon had the key. I thought maybe you just had the key yourself, you know, whatever, whatever. I didn't know Gannon had the key. Babe, he didn't, babe, but, he, but hold on. He had, the key was in our room and in, in um, on top of the dresser the whole time. Remember he kept... Yeah, yeah I didn't pay attention or okay. remember all right, all right, all right. So he kept going out there with the key and saying that he was on... Um, Checking to make sure the gate was locked. Okay, benefit of doubt, maybe it was, because you know we had talked about making sure that gate was locked. Or I've been talking to somebody. I don't know. I'm not speculating. I know I got on him about hey doing this. Yeah. So underneath there, there was a rug. There was in that rug that we stepped out on. It was a, a rug. There was blood on it. I had walked on it, and I was like, yeah, we probably should just throw this away and find a new rug to put out here. So, you talk, rug you talk, what rug are you talking about again? So, I, uh, the one in the garage? Right. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. When you step down, there is a rug. I said, we probably should just throw this away. I said, because we can always just get another piece or another rug, or I'll go to Dollar Tree and get a rug, whatever. I got you. Okay, so that was that. Okay, so then on the next section, it says, I replaced rug, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yep, bam. All right. And then it says, we came in out, and he immediately ran downstairs to the room. So then I kept going down there because his door was locked. He said he was keeping Lena out, which, again, I didn't question because they always get one. One minute they want to play with each other, the next minute they're like, get out. Okay. So then I sat on the sofa with a foot on the Peloton piece because I was going to ride the bike again because my friend said that they were going to redo a later time that we could do the bike. And I kept kind of coming in there saying, are you going to stay here? Are you going to stay down here? Are you going to stay down here? So I took it as if he was, like, excited I was going to stay down there and, you know, just be able to run around and, and, and do whatever. But then I had to go upstairs and help Lena, yada, yada, yada. So I got on my statement. It says I was back and forth, but came back when I heard a loud noise. So there was a loud noise that happened downstairs. So, of course... I run back downstairs and realized, or so I thought, was a box or something fell over in the storage room. So I'm like, something was really loud in the storage room, but I assumed that it was a box. Gavin had his door locked, so I knocked on the door. Of course, I'm like, hello, because I hear a lot of noise. And so he opened and said, I couldn't come in. And I was like laughing. I'm like, why? And he told me he was doing something. I don't remember what he told me he was building. I'm sure it was something about the toy cons or joy cons or whatever. I didn't think anything of it. Just, okay, he's building something, whatever. But there was a lot of noise, and he was in his room. So then, he said his stomach started hurting a little bit or whatever. So I told him to come upstairs. I had some special ice cream. I had his Kia like pops. I had already went and bought them because I thought, you know, this time of year, this is when I got the cold last year, I'll take them. So I let him take the pedia, you know, the pedia pops or whatever, and he took some relax. Mm. So that was, that, was, that was a normal day for Saturday. Like, you were already, you know, going on. You probably already got the plane. We all laid down, yada, 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 right? Right, okay. right. We're about Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sunday, right? Sunday, we talked to you in the morning. Remember I told you, I sent you a few messages, and I was like, hey, we might go on a hike, whatever. Everyone's going to get dressed, you know. Then suddenly we saw the news about Kobe Bryant. So then, of course, that delayed it because I'm sitting on the sofa crying, trying to figure out, like, oh, my gosh, Kobe died. Is this true? Remember I messaged you? We talked back and forth about it, whatever. Yeah, I had just gotten to the airport at uh, Lawton when you told me that. Right. 
So Gannon hadn't talked at all. I mean, Gannon didn't know who Kobe was. Or maybe he knew from, like, hearing it, but didn't really know who Kobe was. He he just noticed that I was sitting there, like, crying, like, oh, my God, you know, like, upset. And we were sitting there talking about it. So I was telling him that, hey, you know, Kobe has a lot of daughters. He only had sisters. You know, Gannon went over the whole, like, I don't want you to think any of this is irrelevant because I want you to think of anything that I say that might have triggered something. Yeah, right, right. I'm listening, I'm listening very closely. So then we were talking about the daughters, and I was like, yeah, he, he always wanted a boy, but he never could have a boy. He had daughters, blah, blah. So then I let him in on a little secret, which I already told you over email what it was. Okay, I don't need to say it again. You already know. So me and him were talking about that. He was kind of like, really? And I told him, I said, yeah, you know, like I lost a lot of babies. I said, it was kind of hard. I said, you want one thing and it don't ever happen. You know, I felt like I was in a situation to talk again about this because we're up here upset crying about Kobe. And so I was like, I'm, I'm telling you because I know that you'll be able to pray and keep, keep a secret. And we were like, you know, kind of being silly about, oh, this is this is a secret we have between each other. We'll tell daddy, you know, yada, yada, yada. So we sat there and talked about that for a little bit. So then Holly got called in the work. So I was like, crap, we had everything packed, ready to go on a hike, had the Getty, had everything. We were going to plan on staying for a while and then go get dinner. Well, she got caught on the hike, so we decided to take two hikes. So this is where all this confusion comes, but hike, Carly went, hike, Carly not went. So we took the dogs on the hike through the trails in Morrison Ranch. So if you leave out of our neighborhood, go out to the side, go up to the little whatever, you could take the dogs on a trail, come back, yada, yada. So that's what we did first. Came back. And it had his water pack. I'm sure you saw the pictures online from Garner God that some other creeper people took. He had his water pack on his back or whatever. So we got ready for round two. So hike two was Garden of the Gods. So then it says Garden of the Gods was our hike two. So we went about two miles in, lots of talking about things. G asked me, did I know any of his mommy's friends from Coastal? It was a random thought process. So I just figured he was trying to be curious about it. I and, and did I remember Brian? And we laughed about some new friend named Mike, too. So we were just having this conversation about whoever these people were. I was like, I don't know anybody named Brian, and I don't know anybody named Mike, too. I guess I knew Mike or whatever. All right, so again, the stomach hurt, and he was, let's see, again, the stomach hurt. And most of the night, he had a stomach ache, and he tried to lay down and poop and stuff like that. So I during this time, I'm messaging you, which you're probably tired, jet lag, whatever. It's like, hey, again, the stomach's hurting, yada, yada, yada. Right. If it happened regularly, you know, so he would get, yeah. you know, whatever. So he asked me about the bath salts. So I talked to you about it yet, didn't know whatever. And he took a bath, and then I gave him a bath salt because I thought maybe he just wants to be clean. You know, or whatever. Bath salts, bath salts. I didn't know any about it. So then, next section. All right, so then the next section was, I don't remember exactly who took the bath first, but everybody had their baths. Everybody was doing their own thing. Gannon was like, going back in his room. I said, okay. So then here's my next step. All right, Albert had grounded Gannon from the switch. I understand that he said he was still grounded, but he could get off. You know, the next day. He'd been in his room most of the night. I knocked on the door. He said he was playing with Grayson. I ain't never heard of talking Grayson before in my life. So again. Grayson? He said Grayson? He said Grayson. Okay. So in my mind, I thought, who the hell's Grayson? But I didn't see anybody in the room. Obviously, I weren't like looking under beds or anything like that. Honestly, I thought, those kids in 11 still have imaginary friends? Or are they talking, is he talking to somebody online because he's not supposed to have, you know, like technology? Yeah, yeah, right. I said, right, yeah. Even the benefit of the doubt, I didn't say anything else. I just said, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Grace and I said hi. I laughed it off, went off about business, didn't see anything. So later on, I don't know the exact approximate time, but I saw he was on the soap. And I was, I was like talking to him. I was like, oh, you want to sleep out here tonight? Or, oh, what, downstairs just, sofa? Yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. I'm like talking to him about tonight, whatever, whatever. He told me his, that his Uncle Matt was going to finish. Is it? Okay, so I don't know who the hell Uncle Matt is. 
So I was just sitting there like, okay, that's when it dawned into me that he had to be talking to someone on something because Grayson, I have no clue who it is. Matt, I have no clue who he is. Then I was like, this can't be characters in some game because they didn't sound like some game characters. I don't know Uncle Matt and I don't know Grayson. So he was talking about his Uncle Matt was going to visit. And I thought, okay, you know, again, try to be sensitive to the fact that know that he probably has friends, family on the other part of the country that maybe he was missing or whatever. Um, so it says, so again, I was like, boy, yeah, so again, that's my statement. So again, I was like, boy, you need to stay off that TikTok. You're being silly. Because I already told him he needs to stay off the TikTok. He was being silly. All right, so I went upstairs. He was on the sofa to watch TV. I told him I'd come back later with him because he wanted to watch something on the show, but I had to get Lena ready, and I promised him I would let him stay up 30 minutes later. I said, you know, I was upstairs, get Lena ready for bed, yada, 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 yada. Well, then, out of nowhere, I, the alarm is going off. It didn't start with anything other than the alarm. Lena had laid down. I had went in the room. I was sitting there with the dog. I don't remember exactly where I was going. I was going to all work. I hear it going off. So I walk in the living room, hit the alarm code in. And I'm just like, dee, 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 my code. and it stopped. So I thought, who in the world, you know, was on the alarm code? Then it beeped again. It kept going. And it, then it started fire. It was yelling loud. Fire. 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 And I'm just like, fire. And I look around see any flipping fire anywhere so as this goes on i'm like okay put the foot in again it stops so i'm like okay i might get on the phone with at because something's wrong with this thing remember when we were out of town the neighbor said she smelled gas and her thing was going off but then they didn't find anything yeah yeah right so i was thinking maybe it's something to do with this so that was how my whole process was so then at that point i was like the car and the main, my knock side thing started beeping. And I ran in there when Lena was at, and I said, Lena, Lena, are you asleep? Because I knew, unless I was under some adrenaline rush, and this is not being mean, I was able to just pick Lena up and yank her out of bed. But ha- luckily, she had fell asleep all the way. So I said, Lena, because I thought I was being crazy. I said, do you hear that? It said fire, right? She's like, yes. And so I grabbed Lena, on her outside, Run her with the dogs, give her the keys to the truck, throw them in the truck, and I run back inside. Run back inside, still don't know anything, and then remember, oh my God, Anna. Sorry that for a second I hadn't remembered that because I was trying to still figure out where in the heck I was with that. So I run back downstairs and realize that there's smoke down there. I couldn't get, I was coughing and choking and couldn't like get through the smoke car. Run back to the garage. You had these little mouthpieces that you could put over your mouth. Yeah, yeah, dust protectors okay. So I grabbed one of those, put it over my mouth, ran back downstairs, and when I ran back downstairs, again, I was still asleep, not knowing this was going on, and there was fire. I took the cover. There was a whole bunch of tons of cover that was inside that little tan thing and Gannon had on or whatever, and I just dropped on them. I don't know if that was the right thing to do. If it was the wrong thing to do, I'm sorry. But I just jumped on it and kept jumping on it. And, like, Gannon was right in one of the covers. So Gannon did burn his arms. It wasn't bad. It was like a, it's like, you know how you get a little bit of boil on it and it's just, like, underneath the skin. But as long as y'all peel it, it's fine. Yeah, but, but, hey, Tisha, which arm? Was it both arms or, like, this inside? I mean, but, like, how was it? So... Cause I remember we talked about that before a little bit, but uh, you never, we never got it. I feel like it was across the arms. Like I feel like it was, and I told the investigators this. I said, and, and I don't want to skip to this part, miss this part. But remember, remind me that. I say this later. I told the investigators later that I said I probably should have looked a little more in depth at his arm. Well, if he's hurt, yeah. Because because it could have been. You know, like, he wasn't complaining, like, oh, it's hurting. He wasn't saying anything along those lines. But I should have looked a little bit more depth. Kind of sleep, we ran. So we ran out. I'm sure they got the footage of us. So we were running out first because Gannon was grabbing his cover. 
running out behind there because he was caught. What, hey, what time was this so we can I can maybe tell somebody to look at the footage? Well, I mean, uh, I told them originally. I don't have access to the ADT now, but I yeah, told yeah. Them because the ADT said it had an alert for fire. So I would imagine whenever that alert went off from ADT, it okay. would have been within that within that few minutes. Yeah, like, fine, I got you. Fifteen minutes. Hey, so, hey, tell me about it. Uh, so, I'm really concerned about these burns because you know, it's freaking hurt. Like what? Right. What? What? Were they big? Were they small? Like what? Was it? Was it? Was it from the candle wax or what? Let Let me get to that part. It's not gonna worry you in a minute when I get to that part. Okay, because okay, I'm freaking out right now. Because understand. So when he runs to the car, he runs in because I'm running. He's running behind me. Jumping your truck. All he's jumping in your truck because the keys were laying there. Okay. So jumping your truck. He jumps in on the driver's side. He's screaming, crying, whatever. Lena's in the back seat with the two dogs. We crank your car, we turn your truck on, and we drive the hell off. Don't ask me why we drove off. I was freaked out because I was like, oh my God. Like, it was the carpet, it was the slope was more more scary and terrifying than actually the fire. So okay. what we did was we drove around the block and I kind of had to be like, okay, what do I do? A, do I need to call the police department? B, does anybody need medical attention? So then we go back in the house. Lena's freaked out. I put Lena in our bed. I said, oh, Lena, so, so you drove around for how long and then came back? No, I drove around the block. Like, oh, one, sorry. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I drove around, like, the block, like, Wando, that area. Yeah, yeah, I know. Pull back up in the drive. You didn't have much gas, because I hadn't put gas in your car yet. You didn't have much gas. Right. My, my process of driving was thinking, oh, my God, like, I, I was in shock. So I pulled back in the driveway and parked. We all get back out, go inside. Lena go, Lena's freaking out, crying. We're both Lena and I are standing there looking at Dan. I didn't at that point in time I didn't see anything on his hands, arms, or anything other than take your hand where you're holding your phone and look on the insides where the edges are. That part right there had little bubbly spots. Okay? So they had bubbly spots on both sides of his arm. And I think that was from when he grabbed the cover and I was trying to grab him up. And he came down with me with the cover because he was, like, latched onto the cover. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to grab the whole cover to put out the fire. So from the inner parts of his arm, had these little bubble spots. So, so you said, but you said both sides or is it just the inner parts? I'm just trying to, because this might be key information. Like both sides, left arm, right arm. I got you. Okay, so both sides of both arms. From what I remember, both sides yeah. of his arms, because he had, when, when Daniel was laying down, I grabbed him to get him up, okay, because I remember it was that, uh... Oh, God. It's one of the covers. I grabbed him to get him up, whatever. He, he gets in the car, whatever, we're talking, he's explaining to me that he thought I was coming, and he was grounded from the switch. So he thought I was coming, and when he thought I was coming, he knocked over the candle. Okay. Because apparently he was playing the switch when he shouldn't have been playing it, which is fine. What is the you know? But he had the candle on the couch, I guess, right? No. He had uh. sitting on some kind of little, uh, that little white thing that was sitting next to the couch. Okay. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. So I don't know if the candle fell over. I don't know. I know that when I got there, there was a fire and it was on his cover. So I was trying to rip the cover out of his hands to get him up and, like, jump on the fire. They have pictures of where there's burn marks on my elbow where I jumped on the fire. So we get in the car, and he's crying and screaming and telling me he's sorry. And he don't want to get in trouble because of the switch. He was on the switch, and he shouldn't have been on the switch. And so we drive around the block, and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Honestly, I flipping lost my mind, because I thought my mind, like, had I not gotten downstairs when I did, had I not heard it, or the alarm system, or carbon monoxide, or whatever, if I would have hit that couch, I don't know that I could have gotten again. And that was my, that was my biggest thing that my brain was sitting there, like, freaked out on. 
come back inside. Lena's terrified. I said, Lena, I will lay in the bed. She's laying in the bedroom. And I was like, he, he doesn't want to go back to his room. I said, okay, will you lay in Lena's bed? He said, yes. He started to say he was cold and had a little bit of shivers. And so I was like, Gannon, I took him and put more clothes on top of him now. Blame it on me. Whatever. I didn't take his clothes off to go through anything, but I asked him, was he hurting? And was anything else, whatever. He told me it was just his arms. So I didn't see anything that would have thrown a flag that I had to be like, oh, my God, emergency or or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. But if his arms was bubbling, that's not an emergency? Well, it it, it hadn't broke skin. Like, it was just, like, underneath. It hadn't broke skin or whatever. Okay. All right. In my mind, I'm like... Okay, well, let's evaluate the situation, you know, tomorrow and see or whatever. It wasn't burn, burn marks like carpet burn or like, you know, anything like that. It, it was bubbly. And I told them from that, I said, I honestly probably could have, you know, got him in the car and said, hey, can you just check this out to make sure? Because I was in my mind in his arms, I didn't see it. As a bad thing, I just knew he was like, it's not hurting. We put aloe on it, and I assumed, okay. So then we put on the long sleeve shirt on him because he said he was kind of cold or whatever it was. He lays down in Lena's bed. Lena sleeps in my bed, our bed. Charlie comes home. I go in, and I'm telling, like, I already prepped Charlie for what was going on. I was like, hey, don't panic when you get here. I was like, they're smoked, I was smoking, getting this happened, yada, 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 yada. I know I was scared to go to sleep, so we both went in there and checked on Gannon. We went in there, we gave him water, and in Lena's bed. We gave him water, we set him up, we were like, are you okay? He was more scared of anything. And so I can, of course, I was like, whoops, you know, so and so something, because I said, sell the couch. I wasn't talking about sell the couch to fix the daggone carpet. I was talking about, like, I would get rid of that couch and get a new couch. Don't panic. Like, my point was, honestly, I wasn't even going to tell you because I was like, Anna was scared of being grounded in here. You know, and I was like, I'll buy a new couch. We'll fix the couch. We'll, we'll replace everything in here. Don't worry about it. You know, and that was not all that as long as you promise me you didn't do it on purpose, if you don't purposely do this to hurt yourself or hurt somebody, we will fix it. And that's how we ended on Sunday. So Gannon was still like, you know, upset. He was highly emotional about the situation. His foot was hurting. So that's where we were at with Sunday. Okay. You give me one second to pee. Yeah. He had blood coming out of his butt. 
And so they just basically explained to do the best she could to get him to pass. And if not, then we needed to call our care provider, whatever. We started beating me up over that, saying you didn't need to have a referral to do this. That wasn't what I was trying to say. I was trying to make the point of does the boy need to have, like, you know, anything done? Or can I just give him, like, an enema or something like that? Because I already talked to him about that. So if this don't work, you want me to give him, like, an enema or something? Because it was a big old turd he was trying to get out. Yeah. So then, that morning, we were like, I said, Gannon, I said, I'm going to stay at home with you today because I don't want you to stay by yourself. And remember, we let Gannon stay by himself. He's been responsible, whatever. But in this state, I, like as in his state that he was in, not feeling well, stomach hurting, bubbling a little bit here and there, him being embarrassed, I made a decision that it was not okay for him to stay there by himself if he was sick. If he's on normal terms, taking care of his sister, playing the switch, doing his thing, then that's fine. But I said, Gannon, you're going to need to go with me. I said, there's a few things I need to handle today. That's me what. And I was going to look at a bike for you. This guy that was on Craigslist because he had this bike, like a um, a touring bike. And I said, yeah. you're going to look at this touring bike or whatever. And that was Monday? Hey, so did you did you give him Miralax or, or the enema or anything like that? What all did you give him? I have in this notes what day I gave him Miralax. All right. Uh, trying to prove um, regularly took that was the bath salts day. Uh, let me see. Like to Saturday. You have Miralax on Saturday. Yeah, here it is. I gave him ice cream and said it. I said it had special stuff because I was telling him it was really those like Pedialyte ice cream. Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah. And it took me relax. That was on Saturday. So, well, hold on, let me. I'm trying to just because you know, obviously, I read to death about his little arms. Um, did you rub any cream on it or give him anything for the pain or, or do you pain medicine or anything like that right. to help him? I, Children's Tylenol or anything? I didn't give him any kind of like, he, he wasn't saying that he was hurting in any kind of pain to give him any kind of Tylenol to give him anything at all. And if I said, you feel like that, that would have been a lapse in judgment on my part, then I'm sorry. No, I mean, I, no, I'm just I'm just trying to sort through it. I know I know how both of them are about you know every time they scrape their finger or something they want a band aid. So I would have just assumed that if his arm was all bubbled up. Did his arm did his arm stay bubbled up like until the next day or was that just did that go down that night or how like that's so, that's worrying me too. Okay, so to get to the next part, Gannon started to peel it. Wait, like when? When would how when did he start to so, peel it? Gannon started to peel it because I guess he was either asleep, I don't know, anxious. I don't know. One day he started to peel it. Like Okay. Kill his skin. Yeah, like Monday morning or whatever. Again, I swear to Jesus told detectives this. I said he started to peel it. When he started to peel it, it had like, uh, I don't want to say like, not gooey stuff or whatever, but it's almost like it was like popping it type thing. And I said. Oh, yeah, like a, like a, like a blister or something. Yeah. I said, listen, listen, if it gets worse, we're going to drive straight. Okay. And that was already the plan. That's why I didn't go to school. I said, if it gets worse, after I put all that stuff on there, whatever. I'm not that type of person where something happens immediately, run to the hospital. You know, you and I have had that conversation before where you would say, like, every little thing later, ran to the hospital. I was trying to evaluate it to see as long as he was talking fine, normal, acting normal. I didn't see at that point in time that he was under any kind of pain. I got you. Or Say that to me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That was a lapse in judgment on my part. I apologize. But 
He started to peel it because, you know, obviously he starts to peel things. And things. So along with peeling that, he started peeling his fingernails. So, and I like that morning, I sent you a picture of Dana laying in bed on Monday morning. To your fault. Yeah, right, right. Dana was laying in the bed, whatever. I went back in there, checked on him, gave him some more water, made him drink some more Pedialyte. Because he, he wasn't eating because he was so upset. And that's when I noticed he started peeling things, like, on his arm. And I said, and, the, and at that point in time, which I told you, like I told them, Jenna had blood that was on his arm and on the side of his wall. I guess from sleeping through the night, whatever it was, peeling it. Because we toted him back down to his room after Lena decided to go back to bed. On the side, you said on the side of his wall? You never told me that. No, I told detectives this. Oh, you never talked to me about this. Okay, fair, fine. That, I mean, I mean, I'm just this is new. I've never heard that before. So now I'm even more worried about him. So they should have told you this. So then I, I, I went in there that morning, sent you a picture. I said, "Get it? Why do you have blood on your wall?" I was like, it was a, it wasn't a lot. Don't panic. It wasn't like oh, so it wasn't like a lot, like all over the place. It was just like little streaks or something. Oh. I said again. Says, did you peel those things? Yes, he did. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to re-bandage your arm. I said, and if you're feeling bad or it starts bleeding, you get a fever, anything like that. I said, as soon as we, because I was going to go talk to the man about the bike. Right. He says, I have to go there first. If you want to go to the hospital now? Of course, maybe I shouldn't have asked the kid that. But based on my judgment and what I was seeing with him, I didn't think that he needed to go right away. We went on about our business. And I said, if you start to feel any pain or hurt or whatever like that, we'll just drive to the base. We'll explain to them what happened with the fire. We monitored it through the night. So on and so on. That was, that was our intent. That was, that was the plan the whole time. Everything. Nothing nothing wavered from doing that at all. And asked me questions. He was just like, why does this happen to me? Why are Dunkin' Donuts. So then we go up from the Dunkin' Donuts and we go up 
Eighty-seven somehow, but made the turn on twenty-five. Needless to say, I went to Nevada. Eighty? You mean eighty-five? Yeah, eighty-five, eighty-seven. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. I went up towards Nevada, which is where, like, Holly gets her eyelashes done, that type of area. Well, like past, <laughs> wait, you talking about past Walmart and all that? Like, not, not towards Fountain, the other way, right? Oh, For the roads. Okay, remember where we went to the recycle at before and the road split? Yeah, way down there close to, yeah, okay. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's that's towards Walmart turn. Yeah, okay, I got you. Okay, so that's the route that I take, which I'm sure they have because I'm not hiding anything from them or the GPS that I took. So I went that way first, and I realized I was like, oh, crap. I was like, I probably should have got on the other exit because I really didn't know. I, well, lately I've been trying to find my way around, like what exits to get off of, things like that. So I get off and realize, like, oh, this is the way to where we went to the recycle thing at. So I just got driving and it ends up making the curve and turning you back to 25, Nevada, and all that. And I was like, oh, there's the Petco. It's going to go to PetSmart, but we ended up Petco, so whatever, same thing. Petco? What's the, you went to Petco, like, way over there? That's the only Petco there is. I don't. I don't know. The only one I know is the one we went to by Target that one day. That's, I'm not your Holly's, Holly's work. Yeah, that's Pet Smart though, isn't it? That's yeah. what I'm saying. I, I got you. I was going to go to Pet Smart, but I went to pick up. I got you. So I go to pick up, and walk inside. Again, I want to stay in the car, playing the switch. He was like, "You want to stay in the car, playing the switch?" Again, Colorado law is he could stay in the car at 11 years old. Oh, so he had it. So he. Oh, he took a switch with him. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yes. He had his switch, playing his switch in the back of the car. You're talking about a truck, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, in the back of the truck. Okay. So he was playing his switch in the back of the truck. Well, within the first time, and yada, 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 I was going in because Sadie has been having, like, these, they, I don't even know what it is. She needs to get her bed paperwork so I can get her shake. I didn't know girl dogs have like periods or like stuff come out. I didn't know this. So I walked in and found these little pads that they had. And I'm like looking at them, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I set the phone down because I'm like, and my mind is so blown that dogs have this. So I'm like looking at it, freaking out, thinking, okay, should I get these? Or should I just call it a pet? You know, the bed. maybe it's just something weird coming out of her, her body parts or, or something like that. Whatever it may be. So then, go back up to the front, look around. I look out the door several times. And these people I know have said, she was suspicious looking out the door. I was looking out the front door just to make sure nobody was at the truck because Gannon was in it. That's all. It was just, he was in the truck. What if he needed to get out pee or, you know, whatever. That was the only reason I kept walking back to the freaking front door just to make sure he was hot. He was in the truck. So then I get three outfits. God forbid I got three outfits and only had two dogs. Because, of course, this is what these people talked about. I got three outfits, checked out, walked out, got in the car. From there, we were going to go to the play again tour. But wait a minute. Why were you so... I'm just, I'm kind of confused because, like, you said you were worried about him getting out, but, like, you know, we've gone to the gas station and, like, he's never tried to get out of the car. So, what What was, I, I, I don't know, maybe that's nothing, but what made you because freak out I, that day? I was parked on the front row. I was parked a little bit off. So, like, oh. if you need to get out and use the bathroom or he was looking for me or, or whatever. Okay, all right, yeah. I was just, that kind of was weird because, like, he's usually. You know, he does what we tell him, stays in the car. But anyways, go ahead. Hey, but not Albert. Exactly, he does. Just like I told you, he could have stayed at home on a normal basis. But he wasn't feeling well. Yeah, so I was fine, like, fine. I got you. Or if he had to poo, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm just trying to be a good parent. That's it. It wasn't no... I know, I know. Fucking in the car. I got you. I, I, it just was weird that you said that, but it's okay. I'll just go ahead. Well, I went on. Got the thing checked out, left. I don't remember if we stopped at another store in between there or what. We were headed to go to the Planet Against Sports. And we were headed to go to go talk to the dude about the body. Well, they had my phone, so they could see that the guy right in the back about the body with the pictures. And I was asking about prices and yada, 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 yada. And I was like, can you, 
I didn't want to go to the man's house with the bike, you know, without, like, have, I wanted it to be legit, you know? I got me in the car, and I only had me in the car, I got Gannon in the car. So I thought, I need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to make sure this is legit. So I'm like, send me a picture of the bike, can you call, can you whatever? And, like, he wasn't acting like, he was wanting to, like, give me information that he could meet me at a safe spot to go look at the bike. So you, just had, you weren't going to go to his house or something? You, he was just going to meet you in general? I told him messages that I didn't want to just go to some random person's house. And that's probably why yeah. they are looking at this whole Douglas County thing, because he lived almost at Douglas County. Okay, yeah, that sounded, yeah, that does sound sketchy. You probably, that was probably a good decision, so. Yeah, so again, you know, open book with them. They took my GPS and everything. I... I got we got to Douglas County and I was talking me again I was talking about it and he was like do you know this guy and I was well, like so, hey, I missed the part you said uh, so you went to Petco but you said you were going to play it again did you never go to play it again I forgot so we didn't we never make it to play it again we were, that was on our agenda but we were trying to go for the bike first oh okay 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 sorry sorry I got confused I'm sorry okay it was a priority first so I was gonna go out to meet the guy with the bike, and somehow they have to have they have my email. They subpoenaed all that. They can see the information coming from the Craigslist. Okay. Oh, it's so, Craigslist. So someone had something on Craigslist. Oh man, that's sketchy, isn't it? Yeah, I you know I don't trust that shit. You there? You went about wood and stuff on Craigslist. Yeah, I mean, for you to do it, I, and Craigslist, I, you know, I never trust that shit because they always have those sketchy people doing, uh, you know, I don't know, stupid stuff like meet and greets and stuff. You always told me about that, remember? Yeah, but like, this, this was just a bike for sale. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm, you know, I'm worried about you and my son's safety. That's what I'm, you know, that's... That's my point. That's why I realized, I said, well, you know, we probably, we run through, okay, so my when you go Palmer Lake heading to Douglas County or whatever, we went that way. It was supposed to be that the guy had a warehouse somewhere between the Palmer Lake area, whatever. What, a warehouse so, of bikes or something? She said he had a couple bikes that he used to do riding and touring oh, okay. and stuff like that. Like those bikes I was looking at doing those rides, like through Alaska or whatever? Right. Okay. So, get out on this road. So, if you're on, I, I, I want to say it's exit 165 or 163. Okay. I think that's what I want to say the exit was. Uh, on, 20, yeah. on 25? Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know how you're going to, before you get to Castle, oh, it's where you. It's where we went to take the. Um, remember how traffic is backed up? You can take that back road. Oh yeah, before you get to like 182, where the outlets are or whatever. You can take that back road. Yeah, and yeah. You have to yeah, I got you. Okay, so it was off that, but to the right side, not to the bougie side where I, like the boonies and stuff was at. It was off that way to the right side. So I originally got off. And again, they can see this on my GPS. I got off, I went left, and went down that little hill where the little people were at. And I thought, well, this can't be the right way, because he was saying something about signs and all this. Turned around at the little, I don't know, woods or whatever. Came back up, went across straight, and realized it was on that right side. I think it's called, like, Palmer Lake or something like that. Supposed to be looking for this place. Still didn't see it. And then it ended up being, like, all mountainy and dark. I say dark. It wasn't dark in the day, but like, you know. Yeah, like, dark like woods and stuff, yeah. We turned around, left out of there, and I was like, well, this doesn't even look too great. Again, let them go search that area all they want to. They're parking up the fucking wrong tree because all we did was went through there looking around and trying to figure out where this warehouse was supposedly at. So you were we in, the, in the truck or out of the truck? in the truck oh I'm, you have me worried i'm like you're out of the truck in the woods looking for a warehouse no it was just driving through there it was like down around up around you know Mount colorado has all these mountains and shit like that so i came back out got back on 25 and was like crap i was like i don't even i don't even like think that was a good place 
Then Gannon was like, well, Gannon was like, why can't we just go buy it at the store? Don't they have them at Walmart? You know, and so we were like talking. I was like, yeah, I'll just figure out another place to get a bike. Because the whole thing was, I was going to buy you the bike and surprise you for Valentine's Day for it. That was like the whole, whole shebang. Yeah, I would love that for sure. At this point, we never got to play it against sports because it was getting, it was approaching the time that we needed to be headed back. Okay. So I said, Gannon, I'll just come back and do, you know, go to play it against sports again later. Don't worry about it. Your daddy and I have been talking about the hockey sticks. So we come back up, heading back towards the house uh, because, um, you know, we had to get back for Lena. Oh, I forgot to tell you a point that we left that day because I put my notebook down. Let me go back to this on Monday. Okay. On Monday. We've still got a long ways to go on this particular phone call. It's three o'clock. Yeah. To... Uh, how, how much longer do we have to go? <laughs> that, that had crossed my mind. So. so we got about another hour to go. Oh, yeah. No, we'll take a break now. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break until about uh, 3.20. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at that point in time, we should be able to start on time. Again, don't discuss a case among yourself. Don't discuss a case with anyone else. Um, with that, all rise from the jury, please. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Um, before we uh, start uh, or resume playing the, um, sorry, before we resume playing the audio uh, that we were playing just a few minutes ago, um, I know that there is perhaps a weather change uh, that is on the way, and I wanted to let all of you know the best way to find out whether or not there's something that's going on with the courthouse, 520 snow. And it will have on there if there is, um, if the courthouse is closed or if it's delayed, and I don't anticipate that, um, I'm just telling you, uh, so that uh, if it becomes an issue, um, that's the that's the fastest way to find out. Um, and we'll leave it at that. And I'm, and I'm giving you that warning because I, uh, one time forgot to do that in a trial in May and we had like, I don't know, 18 inches of snow overnight and I was going really, um, but, uh, anyway, so that's where we, so, and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to play, we've got about an hour of audio left to go. Uh, we're going to play about 30 minutes and then we're going to stop the audio and we're going to do sort of a seventh inning stretch and have everybody stand and stretch and uh, things like that. And then we will finish out uh, the audio. So, uh, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Judge. And just uh, for record keeping purposes, we're playing People's Exhibit 35, which is that pretext call on February 13, 2020 at 111 p.m. Yes. <laughs> when Gannon and I left, we found someone in the neighborhood who was working for the Lawson Ranch people. So this is why I came back to you and said I didn't think it was the carpet guy. I say working for the Lawson Ranch people. I don't know who he worked for. Like whatever that Emory Homes or whatever it's called. He was working for the home company. I approached the guy to ask him, could he go fix the carpet? You know, that, that was before we even hit the road. So that was before so, Dunkin' Donuts and all that? Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I meant to tell you this. So it was before Dunkin' Donuts and all that. So I gave him the I gave him the garage code because he apparently worked for the company or whatever whatever. I gave him the garage code and told him I had money sitting on the counter because Charlie was gonna. I remember I've been playing as lottery ticket things. I was yeah, yeah. tens because I was like, well, he can just have those tens and I'll get more money from. That's why I had one on the lottery. Well. That's why I thought that he was, that the carpet person, you know, had access to the house, whatever, whatever. Come to find out later on, he didn't even make it there. But I'll get to that point when we get there. But why, forgot, why would you give him access to the house? Well, because he was, a uh, Yeah, but. I thought, like, part of the people, and Gannon was with me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So I didn't think anything was a threat if the children were with me. Yeah, I got you. Was gonna come in or whatever. But that you know, you know how I am about that stuff too, right? I mean, that's. I, anyways, anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you. Just that kind of worries me there. But go ahead. You there? 
I didn't do give him the code to be any kind of whatever. No, no, I mean, no. I, I just, was trying to get the carpet fixed so the boy could not be so upset. I got it. I'm just, I just don't like, you know how I am. I don't like have people having access to our house and stuff. But, um, whatever, just, just go on because I don't think that's a, a big deal, so. Anyway, so back to what I was sorry, saying. Sorry, sorry. I wanted to make sure I, lo- I didn't leave out that point. Okay. Uh, so, fast forwarding on, you know, we have to hurry up. We have to get back because I knew that Lena would be coming home at some point. The original plan was we were going to go pick Lena up. That was the original plan. But like, okay, hey, we're going to go eat sushi tonight because everybody been talking about eating sushi. Yeah, yeah. Anna wanted to stay at home. And I was like, no, Gannon, you probably shouldn't stay at home. You still aren't feeling the best, whatever. You should not stay at home. I said, so we're all going to eat sushi. If you don't like it, you can just get rice, chicken, yada, yada. So that was our plan for the day. We got home about, I don't know what time the alarm got set off. 2.30, 2.45, whatever the whole crap is. Okay. Well, I noticed that during the time frame, I set the alarm to alarm away. And I have it from the ADT. Okay. When we look. Somehow, at, during some point, the alarm changed from alarm away to alarm stay. What, uh, but, what, it, but what point? If you, I mean... I had all this, and which was on my phone that they took. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So, I called ADT, and I said, hey, what are the steps in alarm going to arm away to arm stay? And they said, they instructed me that if the door was not open with a sensor, it could have been that you accidentally set the house to alarm away and it would have went to arm stay if it noticed movement that was already in the house. Oh, I got you. Right. But there's a sensor on the garage door. Right. Okay. Well, keep this in mind. Prior there's a to sensor water- on the garage door? And no, and the door coming in from the garage, there's no sensor. No, you said there was. So, there, yeah, there's not. I didn't think there was. Yeah, I was saying there's no sensor. Oh. I might have said it so fast. I was saying there's no oh, sensor. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I, misund- I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. So, either you can come in, you can set the alarm to arm away, and you can walk in through the garage, and it will immediately go to arm stay. Or you can set it arm away, and one of the dogs move. And it will go to our state. As long as that back glass door wasn't triggered and that front door wasn't triggered, it will not change. Okay. So right. keep that keep that in mind. Okay. So this whole thing about your neighbor, he got paid five thousand dollars to release this video. It's a proven fact. Okay. It's already been looked at by tens of thousands of people and it's been investigated again and stout got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. okay. All right. Shadows, movements, infrared, whatever you want to call it. Again, they got out the other side of the vehicle. Okay. So, you, okay. All right. So, he's, ahead, so he's, he's home with you now is what you're saying. At, right. the, at this point in the timeline. Yeah. So it's like maybe 2.45 or 2.30. I'm not sure exactly. But in that time frame before Lena got home, you know, I'm, Getting out, going in the house, or whatever. Gannon goes in, and Gannon goes straight to his room. I go upstairs because I was like, had wanted to try to get on that Peloton the other night. Didn't get a chance to. Put my headphones on, yada, yada, yada. So I'm in there. Gannon had asked me was he that you said that he could go with a friend. You then text me, I don't know exactly what time, but at some point in time, you had told me, <clears throat> don't let Gannon go with a friend or something, something, something. Yeah, right. Gannon came back and said that you said he could go with a friend and come back later tonight. Again, I said, your daddy said you can play with your friends in the neighborhood, but you cannot go with some friend in some car or whatever it may be. But my headphones back on. That, that was where this gets where I have completely parts of the information and not parts of the information. I hear another loud noise downstairs. Not even about, I don't know, 
10, 15 minutes later, maybe 20 minutes. Yes. But I thought you, were, I thought you said you were doing the Peloton. No, I said I'd been wanting to go back and get on the Peloton because I didn't get to. Oh, okay. The other night, so I had my headphones on and I was kind of like trying to get in the pre-workout mode or whatever you want to call it because my goal had been trying to get on the Peloton every day. Yeah, right. So then I heard another noise again and I was like, I pulled them off my ears. I I know the noise counseling. But I also, I'm not stupid. I don't wear them all the way on my ears because they freaking hurt. And I was like, get in. Didn't hear anything. And I just thought he's down there bumping and plopping and, you know, doing his thing, whatever it may be. Still sitting there, just chilling, doing whatever. Heard another, heard another loud noise. And I thought, okay, this is it. Like, I thought he was stomping around. You know, doing crazy things, whatever, whatever. He's supposed to be going to go play with a friend. When I walked downstairs at that original point in time, I thought that guy was the carpet guy. Similarities? I didn't really remember exactly what he looked like, but I remember some of the details. Now, fast forward, you'll hear me say night after night after night after night. I dreamed of different things. That have added detail to this. I thought it was the carpet guy because there was carpet everywhere, boxes, you name it. That was the loud noises that I heard. Next thing I know, I'm out. Blacked out. And which I told you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what but what I'm concerned about with that is did he take all those boxes and carpet with him when he left? The carpet was already in the house. Oh, but what about all the what, I just don't remember seeing any of that stuff when we got there. Did you clean? Is that part of what you cleaned up or whatever? No, the the carpet was. I saw it there when the police watched me take my stuff out. Okay, but you also mentioned he had a bunch of boxes and stuff. But I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. I was just wondering because boxes like laid out everywhere. Right. I just told the detectives I thought we were getting robbed. Okay, I got you. I thought that was the whole point of boxes was to get robbed. Okay, all right. On. On Gannon's table, which I'm sure it had to be if it was swiped correctly, I hit my head on the back of Gannon's table. Like hard. Um, on the back of Gannon's table. What, what table? The, the one I made him? Yes. Like the back of it, up against the wall? No, as in the back of my head, and there was the table right there. Oh, okay. I thought you said the back of the table. I'm sorry. No, the back of my head on his table. Okay. So, from there... A lot of it was a blur because I hit my head. I got you. I, I just remember certain pieces here and there. I remember Gannon running, like jumping on the guy who I thought at the time was the carpet guy. And I thought we were about to get robbed. I just remember bits and pieces like that, trying to push him off. And all I remember now that I sit back and remember, like, play it in my head again, play it in my head again. Played in my head again. It was a very calm conversation with Gannon and this person. I just remember him asking questions, the same questions he asked me, they were talking about. And I don't, do you have, who do you have your own speakerphone with? Because I know you do. What are you talking about, Tisha? And who is listening to my conversation? Me and you. I'm trying to figure out, like okay. I told you the whole time, so, the truth. I just want the truth. Okay, so during that time, I heard that same thing that Gannon asked me about knowing his mommy. Why do you think I've been adamant about you saying to you, oh my God, there's a a piece that that we're not putting together, that we're not missing, there's something different. I don't know how to put it all together, but Gannon knew something about something. And all I kept hearing him say was, do you know where Uncle Matt is at? I don't even know who Uncle Matt is. Yeah, I ain't never heard it. The only Matt I know of is, uh, what's her name? Um, your sister. Well, that would be his uncle and he wouldn't know him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why when you said that 20 minutes ago or whatever, I just like, I had never heard no Uncle Matt, so. When I woke up and like out of this state of confusion, going crazy, whatever was going on, I remember... Gannon saying, 
He will be back later. Okay. Like the man, Uncle Matt saying he'd be back later? Gannon said he would be back later. Oh, Gannon said, okay, all right. So, in my mind, I'm like, did I really like, like what the fuck just went on, okay? Hit my head twice, had to fight off some dude that I explained to them and gave them a descri- subscription, description of the whole entire time, okay? I have been adamant about this and about finding this person. Is that the Mexican and guy you were talking, you told me about the Mexican guy? He was dark skinned and I say Mexican because I assume T- Tisha, be- Tisha, you said you just said she. You mean he was dark skinned? I never said she, I said he. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. It sounded like you said she. I'm hearing things again. I'm sorry. Mexican guy, okay? I gave him the description of that, but to me, dark skinned, I mean their own stepfather could look Mexican. Are you talking about Right, and yeah. at the top, it wasn't right, obviously. But in that time frame, I'm trying to figure out first, and is this real life? Because I was totally, completely in shock what was going on. I thought we were going to get robbed. I thought they were about to take everything. I thought someone was trying to hurt Gannon. I hit the head. I didn't really know back and forth what to do. I was a little bit out of it. I'm not even going to lie. My body system was already weak because... You know how it is in the first four to five weeks of being pregnant. That's my my mind was completely fucking gone. And my mind jumped up after everything. And I say, okay, Gannon's gonna be back. Gannon's gonna be back. I paced up and down the stairs. During that So time- babe, 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 hold on. You why did you tell me you got raped and now you're not telling me you got raped? You think I wanna tell you what a man done to me? I mean, well, I, but I, but I, like that first day, I told you I would do everything and within my power to protect you and and get you the help you need for that. But but that's, and I went but for that's that. a key part of the story. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting it straight. And I went and I went for that. And that's not something that I want to be like. Do you think I want that blasted on El Paso news? Uh, okay, I, but this is me. I, I'm just trying to help you in this situation. Make sure you got what you need from that. But if I don't want to, I don't want to get you worked up. So go ahead. Because this hasn't been hard to know that like somebody was there trying to hurt me and Gannon and I'm getting knocked out of it. I know I understand. Trying to fight for my body, trying to fight for someone not doing something to my body. That's why I'm just trying to make sure I know everything that happened. Remember, this is about the truth. This is not not about anything but me and you and the truth. So. And I can't tell people that because then they're going to say nothing to me, call me names, and then you won't even want me. Why would I not want you? I, I don't understand what you mean by that. I tried. I didn't know what was going on. All of it was a blur in and out trying to figure out. I got up at one point and ran to the door and sent Lena away. Sure, anybody in a logical state of mind could have said, why didn't you give Lena a note to run to the neighbors? He knew everything. He knew everything about us. He knew our names. He knew where we were. He knew where Arthur worked. He knew where we drove. So back up a second, too. So just because I want to know about Gannon's well-being, too. We already covered what happened to you, but you're saying... That initially, you told me Gannon got beat up and and he took him away, but then you didn't say that this time. So, please tell me. I, Gannon jumped on his back, like when he was trying to hurt me. Gannon okay. jumped on his back, and that's clearly what I told the detective. Okay, so what happened to Gannon in that instance? Because that I I gotta know that. I don't know. I just remember Gannon was on the other side. I was on where the door was at. Okay. Gannon was behind me on the floor and was crying. And was then it, they was were, he bleeding or anything? Was it like? No, that he would if he was bleeding or anything. Okay, all right. I just remember all I could barely see what was going on. Was there Not was there any blood on the floor after you got? Do you remember anything like that? When I woke up, there was no blood anywhere. I okay. probably went after the second time. So so. When I ran back upstairs, they sent Lena away. And I said, Lena, please go get um, the nail. 
Harley pulls up. I says, Harley, please take Rainer to Dollar Tree. And they're like, okay. I said, please take them now and get these items. Exactly uh, so what Harley, I did. did. Did Harley notice that you were distraught or anything? Harley was, yeah, she was just looking at me like, what? And the one I said, please just go get the items. And Harley was like, what are they? I was like, carpet spray for the dog smell and the carpet powder for the dog smell. And they, Lena and Harley left. Okay. All right. Because I didn't want Lena and Harley to come in. And then you got two more people involved in this. He's downstairs again. I don't know what in the hell is going on. I'm freaked out like if it's, I'm in some lifetime movie. And no matter who I call or said anything to, they're going to do me just like they're doing me now. Came back downstairs. Came back downstairs. Tried to plead with him about what was exactly going on. He had Gannon wrapped in his arm, like his arm around him. And was saying he Tisha, hold on just a second. Just, I, I'm trying to understand. So, oh my goodness. So you're downstairs and all this is going on and the guy is downstairs and you send Lena away? You, like, you come upstairs and send Lena away while the guy's still downstairs? Or did you want Lena to come in and be there too? No, no, I'm just trying, babe, I'm just trying to understand everything because some of this, this is new information for me that you didn't tell me initially, so I'm just trying to process. You wouldn't let me. You I, wouldn't let me sit there and talk to you. Okay. I, You're treating me like a criminal. Okay, I'm just trying to understand it, so I'm just trying to sort through all of this, so keep going. Thank you for clarifying, though. You <laughs> tried over it. What's wrong? I tried so hard. You tried so hard to do what? I was trying to protect everybody, but I couldn't get back up the stairs. Once I let Lena go, I don't know why I couldn't even like figure out like what to do if I ran outside the yard. What was I going to do? So this was so you sent Lena to the mailbox, or you sent her with Harley? Was with did it... I sent her to the mailbox, and it's okay. Harley with and Holly gets there, and I sent Holly a message, and I said, I sent Holly a message, like, quickly, and said, please get Lena as soon as you get back and go to Dollar Tree. I'll explain later. Oh, uh, so, so, so you sent her a message, and they went back downstairs? Right, because I was trying to check on Gannon. But I thought you said you saw Harley when she got home. I did, they... I uh, sent her a message to let her know they both, Lena pulled up, Lena came up. Okay. I sent Lena to the mailbox. Harley pulled right up. Look at the camera. Since your neighbor has every fucking camera footage, he should be able to see that they came up and I freaking sent them right away. Well, I'll probably have to pay him another $5,000 to get him to do that, so I don't think that's going to happen. It's bullshit, ain't it? So I went back down. It's not funny because he did get paid. I, no, I'm not. It's bullshit. So he went back downstairs. I, I mean, I went back downstairs and I'm like trying to figure out, and he's just telling him. But he had a new family and like all kinds of things and, and I'm sitting there trying to grab Gannon and the next thing I'm I on the ground again. And you can't overpower someone when they put their fingers on your mouth. And this was in Gannon's room again? Yes. Okay. All right. No one tried to help. No one cared. People were treating me like a criminal. When I came through, I woke up. Whatever, whatever I could say and look around and think, I thought I was in a dream. And I woke up. And then it was gone. And that was the second time you went downstairs and he, he hurt you. Second time he hurt me, and once I woke up from that, again, I was gone. Okay, so you got you pat you blacked out again, is what you're saying? Yes, because oh, I okay. hit my head several times because I was trying. Uh, what I was trying to do, I was trying inside the closet, our closet door in there. I was trying to get in there because I was like, man, there has to be something in there that I can just like swing, whatever, whatever, whatever. I didn't know how to use the freaking big gun, so if I'd have left out from Senator Harley. And Lena, oh wait, I didn't know how to use your big gun, like the, the assault rifle. And my gun wasn't in the like in the spot that it always was because you know why? My gun was already in my car. But uh, but babe, I'm just trying to understand here. 
you told me initially that the gun was in the house and that there was he grabbed it in in or so, black gun. He had your black gun. Yours. He had he had my my little pistol, right? The black one, yes. Okay, all right, because I thought I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought initially you said your gun. That's why I was. Confused. No, my gun was outside. In the car. Okay. Your black gun. That's why I was terrified. He knew everything about us. He was threatening us. Every single thing. He knew what kind of car that your mom had drove there and stayed there the whole time in a rental car. Hey, when did um when did you bring your gun back in after all this happened? You told me to go get all the guns together. No, no, that was when we were when I was collecting them. I'm, you said your gun was in the car. No, 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 Albert. On the phone call with me. You said, go check and see and be accountable for all the guns. When I told you yeah, because you had stored them downstairs in those, uh, my gun was in the, uh, I don't know about, I don't know about yours, but my gun was in one of the totes. Remember you had put it there. Because the lady was babysitting. Okay. So the guy had the gun and he put it back in the tote? No, he didn't put the gun back in the tote. The gun was left there. So you put it back in the tote. The gun was left there. Gannon was gone. It was like I thought he was hiding. I legit thought I was in complete shock and thought Gannon was hiding. Okay. I even I even mentioned to the girls, I go, because I, I was shocked, culture shock, thinking, what the fuck happened? I, oh, my God. Like, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I didn't get the time to even go through any of the emotions of it all to think what happened because all I could immediately do was go into, like, the, 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 the defense mode of being like, oh, my God, okay, get the girls out of here. Okay, Gannon's going to be back by the time he's supposed to be back. Because in the end, when Gannon was leaving, I remember him asking him, was he going to take him to Uncle Matt's house? That's, I remember that being blacked out. So Gannon freely went with him. I don't know Uncle Matt. I'm not fucking crazy. So he left with Uncle Matt in a car or something or in a van or, or you don't know? That's why he left it. I just know that the whole thing started to add up. About 30 minutes, Judge. Okay. Minutes. Well, in that case, let's everybody stand and stretch for a moment. Apparently they want to do the wave, at least some of them. I know those chair are out the most comfortable. Right. And, you know, while this is going on, you can, uh, as I said, during jury selection, if some of you need to, you can stand, you can stretch, you can do what you need to do, and that's okay. So. Hey, Kel. All right. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and start it again. Anna kept going outside with some gate. Anna had to be talking to somebody outside of that gate. I begged the fucking El Paso County police officers to find anything on that side of the house where Gannon might have went out at night talking to whoever it was. Like any cars that was parked on that side of the house. Nobody helps me. Okay, so I, I, uh, I'm trying to just, this is what's bothering me about this part, and I'm just, I want to be real with you because we're trying to work together on this, but I went and asked all the neighbors, myself, like all like cameras in front of our house, to the side of our house, everything, to look and see if Gannon left the house anywhere from like 2 to 4, 4.30, anything like that. And no cameras have him leaving. So, I mean, I don't know. What kind of cameras? Are they like Rogers that run 24-7? Yes. They're like three, four, five of the neighbors have those 24-7 cameras. So, and then some are like ours, which are motion sensor. Okay, which ones? Because we need to know which direction that, they're, that their cameras are pointed in order for that to happen. Okay, well, that's something we can look into. Okay, that's something we need to look into. So it, either they they went out in front, I'm assuming, right? Not the front door. So what, what, the garage? 
I would say the garage where he out the back door because Gannon had the gate code, like the key. And he kept going out there with this key or trying to unlock it or keep it unlocked with this key. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, so I understand. So now Gannon, in the, in, with all this going on, Gannon tells the guy there's a key to the gate and then they, they no. and bring the key back no. in the house? No, no. Did you listen to my story? Yeah, I, yeah, I, night, Gannon kept going outside with the gate. I'm thinking that the gate was automatically left unlocked. Oh, okay. Did you lock it back before I got home? No, I didn't lock anything. Okay, all I right. didn't do anything unless they locked it or the police locked it because Harley okay. said the police put cameras in it and locking it. Okay, we, locking everything up. we can find that out. Maybe the police locked it back up. So, let's, yeah, that, fair enough. So, I. That's just all, all that kind of is blowing my mind. You know, he wasn't seen leaving. The key to the gate was in the house. The gun was where it's supposed to be. I'm just trying to figure it all out, Tisha. That's all. It wasn't, the gun wasn't where it was supposed to be because I put the gun back in when you told me to collect them. Okay. Well, hopefully, the I mean, upstairs. they got my gun now, so hopefully they can get this uh, Mexican guy's fingerprints. So. Yeah. It would, would be perfect to me. Okay. nothing but from day one I know and that's what I'm trying to get so get all them this information you know I think the FBI is in on it now so we're trying to get them all this information look for a fingerprint on the gun you know maybe they haven't looked there looking for a fingerprint on the lock of the gate you know stuff like that as the little things that they may have missed you know during this process why why would they have not have done that and I maybe I'm just upset by this because I feel like they barked up the wrong tree for two fucking weeks, Albert. It's been three weeks almost, Tisha. Yes, I, I agree. Me. I agree with you. I, I'm as frustrated as anybody because I don't know anything. And so, do you think I did this? Tisha, Tisha Stout, I don't know. I'm just trying, really? I'm trying to help you, okay? I'm trying to help you get the truth out there. But you've got to, you've got to tell me the truth, Okay. I, I know. Here's what I told the police. The only difference is I thought it was the carpet person, but once I went around because I was freaking out trying to figure out, I was like, if I could go get this fucker and bring him in, and I drove through the neighborhood, the description that I gave El Paso is exactly what I saw. But that is not the exact description, description that I gave to of this carpet person. So my point behind that was, I don't think it was the carpet person because I eliminated him because he didn't have craters on his face. He did or didn't? Didn't. So, but let me, well, hold on, hold on. Let, you know what, something, remember how, oh my goodness, thinking back to this whole, uh, that trip you made to, for the bike, you never found the guy, right? The crazy no. guy? Started looking creepy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You you don't think that this Craigslist guy had maybe had anything to do with you? I mean, I mean, not you, but you know what I mean. Oh, I'm freaking out. Sorry. Um, and you don't, think, don't, you don't no. think that Craigslist guy followed you or just found you? Maybe you told him, "Hey, I'm driving my husband's red Frontier, and I'll meet you there," or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of anything. Okay. But the, okay. So let's say it's him. I don't, what I don't like is that people are sitting here saying, well, there's nothing that shows you guys leaving, leaving. If there's no, like, if there's nothing at this point in time, it's starting to get dark. Because in case you didn't know, in Colorado, it's getting dark around that time. Okay. There has to be something that points to that direction that shows any shadows, movement, anything. And if it didn't, it was because the ring sensitivity didn't pick it up. All right, so so uh, listen, I, I I want I want to I want to be clear with you that I I am not I don't give a flip about social media. You know that I don't have Facebook. I'm not on there, so I don't know what these people are saying. So let's me and you focus on us getting to the bottom of what's going on. Okay, let's try to block out that other stuff for so we can get the truth here. Um, I really I man, this Craigslist thing is really driving me nuts now. Do you think that wait when 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 did you go what was the time frame you went there again? You went to Dunkin' Donuts, right? Because they have whatever time they have me I, on footage, the first time at Petco. Oh at Petco. So after that is when you left? 
Because I went back to Petco to get more clothes. Okay, so you went. So then you when, when did you go back to Petco after the Craigslist trip? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. And you said the guy was already in the house before you got there. You think? When I got there, the guy was already definitely, most definitely in the house, or had already been in the house waiting, or whatever it may be. Which is why I thought. It was the carpet guy because that was the person that I gave the garage Yeah, you gave the garage code to him. Yeah, right. The more I laid and the more I slept and the more I kept worrying about it and thinking about it and yada, yada, yada. Dan kept having his room door locked. I was even so terrified to think that this person even spent the night in our home. Oh, you think he was there the whole time? I don't know. Do you know how worried I've been about this? I know, that's freaking me out, because remember those other stories you were talking about, about people coming in the back door and stuff, while they thought people were away? I, I've been going through all that in my head, too. Albert, I've done nothing but... Look, I have this book right here. You can hear it. It's like, of all anything and everything that I thought of that might have been out of order, but... Uh, so okay, so maybe you think I don't want my life back. You think I don't want my family back. I know. Me, trust me, me too. I'm tired of being portrayed as one. Okay, but you gotta help me because I, I'm, I, I'm trying to sort through all this and put a good timeline together so I can tell this. Somebody reached out from the FBI and I'm trying to tell them a timeline of what I know. All right, I'm trying to make sure they get the truth the first time. This lady that called me. Okay, so. People not going after this. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe the FBI is. I don't know. I, that's not. I, I know they're doing everything they can. Maybe they missed some things we don't know. Uh, listen, something you told me that first day that I'm trying to figure out when the, when when did you do the? Like you said, you cleaned everything up. Cleaned everything up. Yeah, from Gannon's room or wherever you got. You know, somebody did bad things to you or whatever. I was just talking about, like, the clothes I had on and, like, shoes and stuff. Oh, so you just changed your clothes and then and then threw them away, like you said, and Gannon, the whatever Gannon had on, you said you threw that away, too? They got that out of the, the back of the trash. It was oh. a shirt that he wore that was burnt and stuff like that. Oh. That's what I meant, like, cleaned up. I didn't mean, like, clean up anything bad or anything. I'm just saying, like... I didn't want to keep that stuff on and go and believe. But you, but you, you told me that first day you cleaned up the whole area because you didn't want Lena to see it when she got home. That's what you told me. Yeah, my clothes and my underwear. You, you want me to really go in depth about that? I, I'm not trying to make you relive anything that happened to you. I'm just trying to. There's just some truth that I'm trying to find about. I mean, if something was cleaned up or something, then you know, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> me if i any whatever you're trying to say to me don't just, just be honest i just don't want the police to miss anything else okay i mean we think they've missed all these other pieces and then i mean if you cleaned up something that could give them dna evidence on this mexican guy then we need it took my whole dna from this they wouldn't let me pee the hospital bill that i sent you was the whole kit on my body i just but but tell me, why did you tell me? I just don't understand why you told me you cleaned up in the area, and then now you're telling me you just changed your clothes. That that See, that's... When you're talking about cleaning up the area, I'm talking about from Gannon. Like, Gannon had, from his burn marks, there was blood on the wall and on the light switch. Oh, 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 oh. So, so, that, so you cleaned up whatever Gannon's stuff, what blood or whatever was, right? Prior. Oh, where, where was that at? In his room when he woke up Monday morning. But like where? But where? Where in his room? You said you did say the wall because he had uh he was wiping his fingers on the wall or something. I don't know if he wiped his fingers on his wall. I just know his arm probably hit the wall when he was asleep. Oh, I got you. Okay, all right. So, so you clean, but you clean that up, okay? Because I never saw that. That's the first I heard of it. So you you cleaned up wherever his bl his blisters or his burn mark hit the wall. Did you clean something else up? Light switch from where he touched it. Oh, but that was after you showed it to me. Yes. Yeah, you showed it to me and Lena and then told me that he was uh, picking his fingernails so bad that he bled so bad, remember? 
Yes, he did pick his fingernails. Oh, okay. So, so you picked it. He picked his fingernails, and he picked. I'm just trying to clarify. Picked his fingernails and his uh, his blister or his burn mark or whatever. What do you mean? Gavin picks everything that's open. Uh, yeah, I, I'm what? not. You acting like you're on um, got me on some trial with this. He picks his fingers all the time, babe. Because you, it's open, babe. You're absolutely right about that. But I, I don't know why you feel like you're on trial. I'm talking to my wife, trying to figure out the truth. And like I told you before, it, the truth hasn't always lined up. So I just want to find out all the details so we can find Gannon. That's it. Albert, I gave you every. Detail. But you were coming at me saying, I thought you did this afterwards. And Gannon bleeds all the time. Right. Gannon has huge nose bu- no- nosebleeds. Did you tell him the nosebleeds from your truck is from Gannon? When did he have a nosebleed in my truck? Oh my God, I don't even believe It's been there since Alaska. And the top part of your truck, you have his hands had ble- blood marks on it from like a year and stuff ago. Maybe. I, I don't. I, I'm not doubting you. I don't know. I just don't remember that. But that that may have happened. I know he has had a nosebleed once in a while. I don't remember that in Alaska. Nosebleeds are like in Colorado, or at least once every week or two. Every week or two, Gannon has a nosebleed. This is where I get angry. Like people come up here and talk all this shit, and they don't even know him. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the people are saying on social media. I don't even bother with that. And, you know, I have it for a long time. But I'm just trying to. All right. Um, can, you what you got to say. Albert. I'm just trying to retrace some steps in retrace some steps in my head. Did. um? So the Mexican guy, did, did you see like anybody? I'm trying to think of this Craigslist. Did you? Did he have a picture, or did he like give you any information about him? Like, hey, I'm, you know, other than where to find him at or anything like that. I mean, how? Did, what was the framework of like how you set up that to meet him? Everything is on my phone, Albert. I, I, babe, I don't know. I, I, don't, I guess they got your phone. You keep telling me that, but I'm just trying to figure out how you went about doing this. So maybe we can. Uh, that that freaking lady that called me bugging the shit out of me from the FBI. You know, maybe she, maybe that's something relevant. I don't know. I reached out to him. They have access to my phone. Okay. On my phone, I click the Craigslist thing, which generates this whole like number, something, 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 whatever the email they do to protect the people that are selling. I had all that and access to my phone for that. I have limited access because a lot of my stuff don't, didn't load. A lot of it weren't backed up. My emails weren't backed up. My notes weren't backed up. The only thing backed up when I logged in to the iPod that it let me in temporarily was pictures. If they gave me my phone, which is mine, it would clearly have everything. And since they've done all these things, they should see this. They should see pictures of where I took Gannon at home with me later. They should see all this shit, man. And it pisses me the fuck off that no one's even caring. Everybody's going to point the finger, but won't let me sit there and show you. All right, Leticia. Okay. I a, you told me to be straight. I got you on the phone. And I'm trying to sit here and tell my own husband every little detail. Everything. You think I don't want my family? All right, Tisha, listen. Uh, like I said the whole time, I'm just trying trying to help you and trying to keep you and Harley safe from all... I mean, these people are after me now. I don't know who the hell it is, but I, like I said, I had to go get my clothes changed and everything just so I could blend in better. And I want you to know that no matter what, no matter, no matter what, we can work through this together and I, I can help you, okay? But you just gotta let me help you. But I have a very, you told me to be straight up. I got a very straight up question, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Did you kill Gannon? Yeah. I need to know. I need you to answer me yes or no right now. I killed Gannon. Did the you? answer is no. I can't believe you asked me this. I just gotta know you. I told me to be straight up. I gotta know what's happening to my son. Tell I- me why you would think I killed Gannon. 
there's a lot, there's a lot of unknowns. I mean, you I, I, being straight up again, you changed your story again to me for the fourth time. No, I changed my story. You did. This is the fourth version of the same story. Okay. All right. Wow. And like half of what you told me today, with the cut foot. And now he's got burned arms and picking it and his butt's bleeding. All this stuff is is new to what you told me the other day. And the other day you told me to cl you cleaned up the area where you got raped so nobody would see it. But now you told me you just changed clothes. I just don't know what the hell's going on. I didn't tell you. First off, you never even listened to me about anything that went on. I did. I, no, you stopped because I listened to you. I listened to you, and then I went and got the guns and put them in the truck, and then I came back and list, me and Landon listened to you, and then I stopped and picked your story apart. So get it straight, Tisha. I listened to you, and I said, if I'm wrong about the rape, I will get on my knees and beg you for forgiveness. Did I not say that? Yeah, but you haven't. Exactly, because I haven't been proven wrong yet. I want the truth. If I'm wrong, if, they, if, if the, the police, no matter what they're doing, the FBI, the CBI, the CBS, whoever, okay, if they tell me I'm wrong, I will publicly, in front of the world, get on a camera and tell you I'm sorry. But until that happens, we're going to find the truth. How can you tell me that someone didn't come? I don't understand. How can you tell me that someone didn't do something to hurt me and take in? I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you... It hasn't been proven one way or the other. You said you banged your head on the freaking table. I, now I got to tell them to go check out the table and see if there's any blood or, or any of your... He knew that. They had already asked that. Okay, but that's the first I heard of it. You see what you see what I'm saying? You never would talk to me. You literally just sat here in a conversation and asked me, did I kill our child? Yes, I did. Because I, I because if you say no, then I can't. I, I'll stop thinking that you did it. Okay. Dad, that's horrible. I don't know what to think. My the, my son's blood. You're telling me his blood's all over the walls, and now you're telling no, you're they're telling me uh, the Mexican guy that had the gun to your head or whatever took him away, and he knows him, and he could be anywhere. Hold on, hold on. gun. So so where did you get that piece from? That was where that. So I, now you got me twisting all your stories up because that was from the first time you told me the rape story that he had a gun to your head. And you told me it was your Just gun. You told me, but you first you told me it was your gun. So that's fine. I'm I'm not debating the points here, but. I said the black one. Okay, okay, fine. But I mean, you know in your heart I would never hurt Gannon. I yes, I I absolutely believe that. I, but I'm doing everything I can to help you right now. And if you, but, but Tisha, listen, Tisha, listen. The thing is. If you don't, but it's not just, it, I asked you if, you if you killed him, you said no. And I'm sorry, that was a hard question. But if you know anything or you did anything or are just upset about it, we can we can work together and I can help you. But I can't help you if you don't tell me anything. It's just there's so many unknowns, Tisha. Oh, my God. I mean, was what did anything happen that was an accident that you just, that you're scared about? Really? I'm just trying to teach you. You know, you know, with my army training, I'm trained to do ask all these questions to get us in a safe place, right? And that's why I took the guns out from the get go. That's just my training kicking in. Oh my god, I really thought like I, I thought out of this conversation, like I really thought you were going to be supportive of me. I thought you were going to bring your family back together. And I thought that we were going to talk about everything, every single day, of nothing but Gannon. That's what I'm trying to do. For a second, you would ask me to I kill Gannon. I can't believe that. Well, I'm glad you said no. That that gives me a lot of hope and peace. I already told him about how maybe, just maybe, you might have a brother. Maybe. We talked about, we cried about Kobe, we did a lot together. What, what? What are our kids? Okay, okay. Stop. Okay, Tisha, let me ask you this way then. I don't believe you killed him, but did, did something bad happen to him and he maybe maybe he is dead or not with us anymore and, and you just panicked and didn't know what to do? I mean, is there anything like that? Just any information is what I need. I just, just, I can, we can help you. I can help you get through this. 
But it's, I mean, but we got to know the information about Bubba. I mean, just think of, I mean. Really, yo, yes, I'm just trying to figure out what happened to him. He's gone and nobody knows anything, but you were the last one to hear him speak. Okay, you, which was Monday when you were driving around and he left the house. The last time we heard him speak, I, I don't know. I don't know when that was. Before I left, probably. When I left and he went downstairs to watch Pokemon. That's the last memory I have of him. Now, but let me tell you something. People don't have the life that I have. People don't just be a normal person. Just doing their thing. Finally had what they want to do and be in the sky working. Oh, they don't do that. People premeditate things in life. There's no sign or indications of anything that I would have ever heard of those children. I fought for you. I fought for them. Yes, you did. You fought for all of us. You're right. I'm not I'm not questioning any of that, Tisha. I, I just was did it, did an accident happen? I mean, other than the candle or the burn? I don't know. I'm just trying to ask all the questions. I work with kid children long enough, Albert. If an accident happened, I'm smart enough. I know what to do. I've had plenty of friends who've been in situations where they've been in the classroom. They accidentally dropped the kid. The kid might have broke their leg. You go to the people, you tell them it's an accident, and you work through it. Okay, so all right, you made a you 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 also said something that was calmed my heart, you know, tremendously about Bubba. That you know, basically, you didn't premeditate anything. So whatever happened to him had to be an accident, just like the candle. And you, I mean, obviously you didn't, you wouldn't plan on something like that because you're a teacher and you do all those babysitting events. I know you wouldn't hurt kids intentionally, but whatever happened was an accident. And I know you didn't plan it. I didn't have anything to do with it. Why are you saying this to me? So, di so he, he would have had to have died naturally then. Other than... He's dead. I, I I don't know, Tisha. I can't even believe you are saying that. Kenan is alive. What's wrong with you? Because it's just uh, this. None of this makes any sense. I mean, he would have been found by now. Okay, he didn't. The, all the cameras, all that footage shows him not leaving the house other than in the truck. And I just, I, I like I said. Just trying to help you get through this. Help me? Yes, help you. Because help, help me get through this. Because I yes, I am trying to help you. I want to know what happened to Gannon and try to help you and keep Harley safe and everything that I've said the whole time because that's who I am and you know that. See what y'all think. This is what y'all think. Y'all think somebody's gonna come in here and say something just to appease everyone. Well, a true person who is completely innocent, you can keep beating me down in the ground all you want to because I didn't do it. I'm not beating you down. You think you don't want me anymore? Fine. You don't want our family anymore? Fine. You took my car. You took everything. I didn't take anything. They got all my shit too, Tisha. I I, I got two cars now because Harley's not gonna pay for it. I got two cars. I gotta pay for. That I'm, I can't even see or touch. I'm begging you. No, she hasn't. That I know. So I. Every day, Albert. Why are you not with your wife? Because you want to be so honest and ask questions. Why are you not with your wife and daughter? Because okay, I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. Because of this conversation, Tisha. I don't know, and I've told you that the whole time. I'm confused. I'm all over the place. I just can't. I can't get the truth from you or the police, or nobody. And now, you're, now, you know, it's just even worse now because I got another story. I've got to try to make a theory from. Another story. This is a, you have never talked to me. But you just told me. You told me a few minutes ago. We had uh, and we went over it. I. You told me the first story. No. You first. You told me he ran away. Then it was the rape story. 
Then it was the second rape story. Now it's the Wait, third rape story. I believe you just said the rape story. I'm, j I'm, I'm just, what do you want me to call it? The, the story of Gannon disappearing? Okay, you told me the first version of that, the second version, and now the third version. You want second or third version? Yes. How you sit down and talk to me? No, that day that I got home. No, the day I got home that next morning after my mom and sister and Landon and everybody was at the house, you you told me you were texting Bethel and you told her the story. I don't know what you told her and I, I kinda don't even that's, yes you do. I don't even care. No. I kinda told her. And it's where? My God I can't believe you're lying to me right now. About what? I'm not lying to you about anything, Tisha. They had y'all at the police department when I was there. Oh, 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 you you mean when when Landon showed up and then they brought, you know, I was already there or whatever? Is that what you're talking about? Because that's the only time I know, I don't even know when you're there. I just assumed you had finally come in that night. Or was it the next day you came in? I don't even know, Tisha. You were there because she was talking to you there. Who was? Bethel. She was talking to me at the police station? Yes. I, I, honestly, most of most of my talking was with uh, Mark, the other guy that was at Starbucks. So I I don't know what you mean. She was talking to me. I think I might have talked to. I think I talked to her for like ten or fifteen minutes. I, if I'm did not did not tell you anything different. This is all my day. I was going to lay down. I know. Hey, Tisha, 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 I believe you, okay? I, what I want you to answer for me is those simple questions. Did did anything, did, did Gannon die and you just freaked out, or was there an accident involved? Did you kill him? I, answer all those questions. Those are the ones that I want to know, okay? I don't care about who talked to who, when we went where. That, honestly, at that, this point, none of that freaking matters. What matters is that little 11-year-old boy is, is either out there or he's not, and I got to know that. And you're the only one that has any information regarding that. I gave you that information, and you're not going to look for it. No, but you you didn't you ignored my question. I I mean, answer those questions for me. That's the first question. All right. Did you kill Gannon? No. Okay. Did you did Gannon die on your watch, whether it was an accident or naturally from some injury? No. Okay. Did Gannon have an accident of, of a serious nature and you freak out and cover it up? No. So the answer is to, to no to all of that. Correct. Okay. Now, these, this is going to be very uncomfortable for you, even more uncomfortable than what I just asked you. Did Harley kill Gannon? God, no. Okay, does she, any of the same questions, does she have anything to do with an accident, a cover-up? Was she... Involved in this at all with you? No. I haven't been involved either. So I just, but, but so something, so there's a blank somewhere that I just, you have not filled the blank. So. How have I not filled the blank? It's. You, so you don't think for a second that someone came in the house and took Anna? You don't think that? I don't doubt that. I don't know what to believe, but I'm not doubting you. I'm just having to ask all these questions. So, you know. <sighs> I begged you. you. I said, hey, let us all be together. Look at me in my eyes and ask me that question. Feel it in your heart and then ask me that question. Well, but but you gotta you gotta look at it from my perspective, okay? First of all, uh, and I got a couple things to say, so let me get through it. These these stories, just like I've said the whole time, they don't sound legit to me. They just don't add up. They're not true. Something is off from every story because there's different versions. So that's number one. Number two, I've only talked to you once. Okay, okay, all right, fair enough. But you got to put yourself in my shoes, okay? what the hell would you do if this was Harley, okay? And, and you didn't have all the information. How would you put all these pieces together? So, I mean, you got from my glasses, how am I supposed to put all these pieces together when I don't even have a third of the pieces? I'm just trying to fit the piece, find the pieces and get them together. 
You want me to answer that question? Which one? The one about what if it was Harley? Yeah. Yeah, answer that question. Okay. So as soon as you tell me this, when when I get off the phone, I will have my husband and my children together in a home, and our officers will be praying, and we will be on the phone with the detectives, and we will be saying, "Listen, I support my husband, and we are need we need to find someone over here. If somebody had to see something. Ask them again." Do something. We will be putting a fucking alert out everywhere. We will be putting a description out everywhere. We will close the fucking borders from Colorado to all of them, up and down 95, because at least the fucking Mexico. 95? What? what that shit. Why would I'm you? Sorry, 85, whatever. 85? Oh. The state, at least the Mexico. Well, you, please be careful when you say those things, because then they're going to start looking up and down 95 on the East Coast. Okay. Sorry. And that's not going to help us. It, I mean, since you know he's not over there, that's not going to help us if they get sent over there. Okay, so, so, but, but you didn't answer my question. How am I supposed to put all these pieces together? You're telling me let's go home and pray, and I've been praying my, I was mean, praying nonstop. Okay, but you know we got to have action too. So, I, so here, I listen. I got to go because now I'm now I'm freaking. Everybody's going to start questioning me at the house. Where have you been? What are you doing? Are you involved? I'm, I'm going to get all those questions now. So I... The house? Who are you staying with? Uncle Jeff and then freaking Veronica and all them that are all over the place. Okay, so... Why would you have to be anywhere near them? I don't have to be, but you saw we had Why to do... Listen! And your daughter. Tisha, listen, I had to do these statements and interviews and all this shit. It's just nonstop. Every day is something else. Okay, so if, if you think... If you think all this information is what they need, apparently the, the El Paso people haven't done their job and they haven't forwarded it to the FBI. So I'm, I, I don't know, there's some Amber lady called me from the FBI and I'm going to just email you her number and her name. And if you want to pass this information to her, that's much higher than the freaking CBS or whatever you call. Yeah, because they called everyone I know. Okay, well then that's what you can tell them too. Okay, I but I don't have the document you have. So I, anyways, I'm just going to send you the contact, and if you want it, you take it. If not, I can't make you do anything. But I got to go, okay? Yeah, but that's not how you would say trying to find your son. You would not say, if you don't want to do anything, then blah, blah, blah. No, that's not true, because I can't. I, I wanted you with me the whole time, and you left. So I'm going to give you the information you need to pass your stuff along, and then you can do that, okay? Listen to me. We don't have anywhere to stay. I'm asking you to stay with your wife and daughter, and let's do this together. And you tell me no, if you think that you don't give a shit about us, and you don't want that. You tell me no right now. Tell you no. You tell me yes. If you want your family together because you believe I me. I wanted my family no, together. No. Listen to me. Listen to me. I wanted my family together the whole time. And listen, I... You're not letting me help you, so I recommend that you get in top co contact with this Amber lady because she offered me help and safety because I told her what I was going through, and she I, I'm sure they'll do the same thing for you, especially all that you've been through with the you're telling me about the social media stuff and people chasing you around. You said in the email, so I'm gonna send you her contact information, okay, and then you decide whether or not to contact her to to find protection for yourself and get them this information, okay? But I gotta go, okay. I got to go, Tisha. I got to go. The question. No, Chris, I said, yeah. I said I wanted you to be together, but I got to go, okay? I got to go. Bye. Bye. Mr. Allen? Just getting Mr. Stout back up on the Okay. Mr. Stout, if you would resume your seat on the witness stand, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Thank you, Judge. At the time of this call, Mr. Stout, did um, you know the defendant's location? I did not, no, sir. You can move that microphone closer to you if you want to, so you don't have to lean over. Right. Yeah, the chair, the chair doesn't move. Everybody makes that mistake, but the microphone does. Thank you. At the very beginning of that call, uh, it seemed like there was a disconnect uh, where the phone dropped or something like that. Um, during the... the uh, process of these recorded phone calls, was that common to happen where for some reason the call would drop and then either you or her would have to call the other person back? Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was. And um, 
Yeah, yeah, yes. There were some references in there where you said you were feeling heat and that you went up to uh, up on the north end to buy some, I think you said redneck clothes in that. Uh, what did you mean when you were saying that, that you were feeling heat and that you had to go buy some redneck clothes? So much of this call and many other calls, I was trying to, if you will, stay in character, just to keep, I call it keeper on the hook. So saying things that I knew that we had joked around or talked about in the past. I did, in fact, go to Bass Pro Shop and buy some additional clothes because at one point I didn't have all my stuff out of the house and um, yeah, I needed some additional things just to get by. So it was kind of telling, you know, telling her actually what I did. Um, but also using something from our past to keep her on the hook. So, And in that portion of the conversation, you said um, you hoped that you would run into her while you were up north. Right. For context purposes, had uh, the defendant told you that she was staying with somebody up in the north part of El Paso County? Uh, she did. I said there was some story. I don't remember the specifics, but yes, she was up there, and that's why I referenced that. Um, I said she admit the defendant. Okay, and uh, but you didn't have any independent knowledge whether she was up north in El Paso County or someplace else in the, even in the country. No, sir, I had no knowledge of her whereabouts, period. She mentioned uh, in that phone call about Gannon stepped on something in the garage and cut his foot on uh, on the boards and got blood on the boards. Yes, I heard that. Uh, can you describe for the jury and... Um, what boards she would be talking about and where in the garage those boards might have been. So uh, as you saw in a photo, I, I, it, the garage was pretty messy. But there was, uh, depending on what project I had going on, I would stash boards uh, on that. Looking into the garage on the left-hand side, I'd lay them down so she could drive over them uh, when she parked her car in the garage. I just ran out of room as I had projects stacking up and, and whatnot. And just so we're orienting ourselves correctly, when you say looking into the garage on the left-hand side, you're talking about from the street. From the street in. view, yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Was it common for Gannon to take out the trash, as was referenced in that phone call? Absolutely. That was one of his chores. Where was the uh, the uh, trash? Where would he take it out to? So, once again, from the street view, uh, the, the gate that was referenced numerous times was to the left of the garage. And and so he would he would typically go out the back door through the backyard to, and, and then around the house to the trash can because the gate we kept locked typically. So let's talk a little bit about that backyard. Um, was it completely fenced in? Uh, yes, it was fenced in all the way around. Yes, sir. What kind of fence did it have? Uh, I believe it was a wooden fence. I think. Yeah. Was it short fence, tall fence? It was like a maybe six or eight foot privacy type fence all the way around. Okay. Um, and, and, and joining the neighbors had joining sides, so there was no there wasn't two fences. It was just one fence on each side and the back that joined the neighbors. How many gates in the backyard? Just the one on the as I referenced already the left hand side looking at the garage from the street. There was reference to a key in that phone call as well, a key to the gate. Yes, sir. Did you keep that gate locked closed? Well, yeah, we kept it locked. The only time I really remember unlocking it on a regular basis was to cut the backyard, to cut the grass in the backyard. Where was that key normally kept? Uh, I had a little basket of just whatever, just doodads on top of my dresser or, or somewhere in my in the master bedroom, and the key would be in there. It was it was a couple keys on a keychain, and it was I kept it in that basket. Was the lock on the? Um, hopefully, I'm going to describe this correctly when I'm asking this question. Was, was it a padlock, first of all? It was. Uh, was that padlock on the outside of the gate, meaning closer to the street, or on the inside yard part of the gate? No. For instance, if Gannon were to unlock it, he would have had to go through the backyard and access it from the backyard side of the gate to unlock it. He could not reach over from the front yard side. Does that make, is that clear enough? Yeah, so just so we're clear, the, the lock that is locking the gate is on the inside of the yard. Yes, yeah, on, the, on the backyard side, yes, sir. How tall was Gannon? Oh, oh, I don't remember it right off the top of my head. Um, approaching five foot. I don't know if he had hit five foot yet. Is it in, in that range? I guess um, just to really drive home this point, maybe unnecessarily, but uh, was he tall enough or did he have long enough arms that he could reach over a six foot fence and unlock the gate? Yeah, let me reiterate. I just mentioned that a second ago. He could not open the gate from the front yard. I mean, if he was standing on a, a ladder or something, but. It, standing on the ground, he could not, he was not tall enough to reach over and unlock it. He had to go from the back. Could you even 
I think I could. I, I, I pull myself up far enough to get it. I, I'm not sure, but I don't remember ever doing that because okay. the, the lock was a little bit, uh, you know, it hung a little bit lower. It wasn't at the top. So, okay. <clears throat> there was mention of Kobe. Who was Kobe referenced in there? Uh, Kobe Bryant. He died, uh, as many of us know, he died on that Sunday, which I think would have been the 26th. Um, and I, and I think it was in the phone call. I said, she had sent me a message, a text message about it right when I landed at the airport in uh, in Lawton, Oklahoma. That's oh, what I found out. Okay. So just she had sent you a text message in reference to Kobe Bryant dying in that helicopter crash. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's what that reference is to. Yes, sir. There was reference of bath salts. Um, tell us about the bath salts. What was that reference in, in regard to? So... Um, <laughs> Some years ago, bath salts became kind of a, a, a recreational drug or something. I, I I don't know much about it. I don't think that's the same bath salts as you put in your bathtub. I'm not 100% sure, but something came up in a text message thread where I referenced earlier about a friend on the bus, that, this new friend that I, I'd never found to exist, but he said Gannon could come over and play if he Gannon were to bring bath salts with him or some, some drugs or, or whatever. And that's where the bath salts were introduced into the conversation. Um, the next thing I did was um, ask Tisha to get, or the defendant to get all that. We had some, you know, household bath salts. I said, get all those and put them up just in case. Put them up for like, what oh, reason? In case that story was was true. But um, put them up so that maybe Gannon couldn't Gannon get to couldn't them? find them or Gannon couldn't get them or, or whatever. Okay. There was a uh, reference by the defendant to um, the way I wrote it down was the Douglas County um, thing, basically. Uh, were you aware that there were searches happening up on the northern part of El Paso County, southern part of uh, Douglas County line? Yeah, at some point, I don't remember the exact date, but I, I know the search moved into that area because we were, uh, I, w I and those around me were following the news pretty closely um, and getting most of our information from there, so... So, uh, to your knowledge, that w the fact that there was a search happening up in that part of the uh, state um, was actually being broadcast on the news. I believe so. Yes, sir. That's where you learned it. Yeah, that's where I learned it. I, I think also in, in in those pretext calls, that area was mentioned to me at one point. Uh, no specifics were given. Just had a, had you ever been through that area or whatever. Um, so, based on her reference. Did that indicate to you that she also had uh, learned that there was a search happening in that area as well? I don't know if in that moment I put it together and, you know, immediately following that phone call, I think somewhere down the line, I put it together that, oh, she must have put those together, seen seen the news as well and and, and brought that up because of that. I, I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. Allen. And then the comment that she makes um, close in time to that comment about Douglas County uh, is that y'all are barking up the wrong tree. Yes. Uh, in your mind, was that her uh, trying to move the investigation away from that area? Objection calls for speculation. Spade. Who was Uncle Matt? That's the first, I, I think I said that in the phone call. I, I've never heard of, the, I, I brought up uh, the defendant's sister's ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or something. That's the only person I could think of, of the name Matt that could have been referred to as an uncle. No other person that I've ever heard of. So when she said Uncle Matt, that is not a name that either that you knew about? No, sir. Obviously, the, it sounds like um, in that phone call, there was a range of emotion happening on the defendant's part, especially. Was um, that range of emotion consistent with her personality the way you knew it? Absolutely. In that particular phone call, uh, did she ever change her persona or identity as you were talking to her? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. In that phone call, was your question? Yeah. In that call. Yeah, Mr. Allen, in that phone call, I only ever was talking to the defendant. You mentioned in that phone call, these people are after me now. What did you mean by that? Absolutely nothing. Just There was a statement just to put myself in, this, in her shoes as well. Um, to tr once again, try to keep her on the hook. Okay. And again, I'm not going to, with this question, I'm not going to ask you to opine on the ultimate question as to the purpose of this trial. 
but you made a comment. I don't believe you killed him. Was that a question again that you were asking to keep her on the hook and keep talking? Uh, yes. Be, yes, absolutely. Okay. What about the idea that um, you made mention in that phone call about even you were not getting truth from her or even the police? Uh, was that, again, another one of these references to you trying to keep her on the phone and keep talking? Yeah, absolutely. It was a little bit of both. I, I felt I wasn't getting truth from her, but she was saying the police aren't doing their job, so it was, it, it was a little bit of both. When you had custody of, of Gannon and Lena, uh, when you were still married with the defendant, would you, would, would the kids sometimes go visit Landon, spend time with Landon? Yeah, there's scheduled visits, um, holidays, summertime, you know, I, I don't remember the exact schedule right now, but. Would the um, defend, defendant have uh, like a dance party when the kids would leave, indicating she was happy that they were no longer in the house? There was w one or two times I remember her and Harley, or excuse me, the defendant and Harley uh, having a, I call it what I call a dance party. This would have been when we lived in Myrtle Beach when I did not yet have custody. So it was like weekend visits or whatever after they left. And then I think it's clear based off of <clears throat> the context of the way that call unfolded. But did this call occur before or after Gannon's remains were found? Uh, this was before. Okay. Judge, the uh, the next portion that I intend to get into would be the next phone call, which is about 37 minutes long. Um, so I would, I'm wondering if we should uh, potentially. Yeah, council approach for a moment. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have some good news and some bad news. And uh, the good news is uh, that uh, the other phone calls that I think are going to be played are not as long as the first one. The bad news is that we have about 20 minutes, and I don't think we can efficiently use your time. Um, but I also think that we've had uh, a long afternoon, so I think that probably everybody could use a break uh, early. Um, I, we are still uh, on track. We are still moving things along. Uh, the lawyers are, I think, doing their best to try and move things along. Sometimes things just take longer than what they think. Sometimes uh, they go faster than what they think. Um, so I apologize that we cannot uh, efficiently use your time today, but I, I think it's probably good that everybody has a break. So um, we're going to uh, end early. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do any investigation about any aspect of the case. Remember to avoid uh, any stories or uh, opinions from anyone uh, regarding this matter. Um, and if we can have everyone where they need to be so that they can meet Mr. Combs in the morning at the usual time, uh, and then we should be able to start right at 9 o'clock, uh, and go from there. So with that, oh, and uh, the 520 snow, I don't think you're going to need it tonight, uh, but we shall see. So uh, if that's an issue, that's the best place to find out. But other than that, uh, we'll see you in the morning. All rise for the jury, please. <coughs> Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Mr. Stauk, you can go ahead and step down.